Right, so welcome to another Grumpy Grognard gaming episode. I'm going to call them episodes. I mean, it, it sounds like we're sort of being a bit weird, but I can't think of anything else to call them. And I've been labelling them episode one, episode two, up until like, episode 28 now, I think it is. So um, we'll, we'll just call it an episode. So uh, yes, welcome. I have Matt here as normal. Hello. I'm not sure I'm normal, but hi, I'm there here. He is. There he is. Today, and also <laughs> I, I, I had snakes lay eggs this week. The eggs don't look to be any good, sadly. But I went to feed them today, and I was reminded how stupid... No, the what do you feed the eggs? You don't feed the eggs. The snakes. <laughs> um, no. the, the eggs just go in vermiculite in a warm place, but I think they're infertile, which makes sense, because I always thought I had two female snakes together, not a male and a female. But anyway, oh. moving on from that, I fed them today, and each snake decided they wanted the other snake's rat. Oh. How did that so work I fed out? the axe, and... Um, not well. It ended up with me with two handfuls of snake trying to separate them because they started knotting around each other. Obviously, oh. they're constrictors, so they then start constricting because they've got their own, they, they, they've got their rat, and you've just basically got a massive, massive, or oh, what, uh, sixteen to eighteen foot of muscle. <laughs> Damn. That's basically constricting itself, and you've got to try and separate them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was fun. So I chucked Dax in a box and then left Kira to it because Kira's the one that laid the egg. She's a bit out of condition. It was just another reminder of how very, very, very stupid snakes are. It's, it's still baffling that some cultures revere them as the, the, <laughs> revere them the, as the a icon of wisdom. knowledge. They yeah, are not. What the they fuck? are not. They're as thick as shit. <laughs> they really, really are. Right. Anyway, anyway, that was what was going on there. So that, that was fun. But today we're talking, we, 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 we mentioned this previously we said we're going to do like a 40k retrospective and showing our age well let's face it it was better in the old days there's it no was. two ways about it there's no two ways it about it if you go back far enough it was it was different and better and if you go back not so far it was just the better yes yes exactly and we're going to start off right at the beginning with rogue trader and i'm a little bit annoyed because i saw today that jordan sorcery put up a fucking video <laughs> doing ah. doing rogue trader i'm not even kidding i'm just like ah, oh, you bastard but by now i've done too many i've done too many notes and i'm sure that our content will be sufficiently different from his because i yeah, already I've... delayed if you remember correctly i delayed the primaris video like the primaris the video yeah. because there was loads of hoo-ha going on on that and i'm like no I'm, I'm not delaying this one as well it just no. if, they, if they end up syncing together and we're literally like he does his second edition one when we do our second edition one of third edition which like don't fucking care yeah we talked about doing this ages ago Sorry, the evidence Jordan. is on youtube <laughs> and youtube never lies yeah i'll have to go and check out his i'll check out his video after this one because i've not seen it yet i was gonna say yeah that. i've i've not actually watched his video yet i've purposely not watched it no so i, didn't I, I will check it out because the lad does do good content and yeah um, yeah i will i will definitely check it out but we're doing this today so basically the the uh the, the homework behind it all was literally have a look at road trader and we were going to talk about it because i don't know about you man but i've not I've not looked at Rogue Trader in probably nearly a decade now. I very occasionally scoot through it to check out some old artwork or someone says something online and I'm like, really? And I'll go and have a look and I'll be like, no, I thought they were chain shit or no, they were right, actually. Um, yeah, but yeah. yeah, I've not looked through it in any proper detail for quite a while. Like when, we, when I was going through the rules earlier today, because all homework must be done on the day it's supposed to be handed in. Um, I was kind of like, some of this I remember, some of it is different to what i remember like i always mm. i always remembered robots as needing to have a program written for them that kind of sets out sets out parameters they kind of do yeah they kind of do but we'll get into that because robots are one bit i was just like yeah i can see why that didn't make it to second edition <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the first of all you've got the book and you've got the book front cover and you've got that iconic piece of art by yeah um i think it's john sibic who mainly understandably i knew through doing dinosaur artwork i had a lot of oh, dinosaur nice. books i was majorly into dinosaurs when i was a young young kid and he did like those all sorts of dinosaurs artwork um like the accurate recreations of it and that kind of stuff and yeah he did this piece as well um and this piece is so iconic that bolt for us saw it and went yep that's our second album cover yep but they were signed to rawhammer records at the time mm, indeed along with yes. along with wraith and d-rock whatever D-Rock, happened, oh, those God, two. I remembered Remember D Rock? I have. I never heard any Wraith, but I have heard the D uh, Rock. Well, well D Rock kind of like the the glam hair metal sounding. Very though. much so. Yeah, they did a, a song it. called uh, "Here Come the Noise Marines," and it was very very cheesy. 
<laughs> Whereas Bolt, Bolt Thrower are more like, uh, no, death metal, thank you. Um, Amazing. Yeah, you know, sort of Napalm, death, grindcore. Oh, yeah, I still miss them now. Actually, Carl liked my post today. Carl Willett's nice. the focus of, uh, of, of Memoriam, obviously, post Bolt Thrower, um, because Memoriam just got announced for damnation. <gasps> Which has nice. me wavering. I'm now like... <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going anyway, so I'm sorted. Pretty much. It's, it's basically Is that for the Friday main... night? Yeah. No, no, for the main damnation. Oh, okay. The main, still, the main I, day. I haven't seen them announce anything for the Friday night yet. So I don't know they if they're doing one that band, this year. One band yeah. today called LLNN I've never heard of. Who they the are fuck? starting... I had no idea. No fucking idea. I'm obviously too old to know who they are. But I saw Memoriam added to the lineup, and I was just like, nice. "Well, that's, I was like, I'm wavering now." And then Carl liked that because I, I, I'm mates one of Carl's mates. And then the dude put, "Oh, you know, you should do." It. I was like, "Man, I've got so many gigs coming up this year. I've got Slam yeah, but you Fest. should. I'm, I'm seeing massive. I know. I'm seriously thinking about it. It's money. I haven't got two million subscribers yet, Matt. Make that happen. <laughs> I'll, go to, I'll go to Damnation. But I'm going to keep an eye on Night of Salvation and see what that's like." And um, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can get the train down to Manchester and crash on a hotel floor again or something. I don't know. Yeah, fine. <laughs> but, but yeah, seeing Memoriam on it, I was like, literally, like, that lineup's got five times better. And then Carl liked that one as well. Carl's a good bloke, I've met him. So, um, so yes, there's, there's your bolt thrower connection. But yes, you've got that <laughs> iconic piece of artwork. Maybe we should from... do Maybe we should do an episode on bolt thrower and all the Warhammer stuff don't that they've done. Don't tempt me, Frodo. Frodo. And that's, that's going in there. That, that clip from yeah. the Rings is going in there verbatim. <laughs> um, no, I'll be, I'll be fucking well up for doing that. Obviously, you know you know where the series name, where Next to Conquer comes from. Uh, so. Fourth Crusade. All up for talking about fucking Bolt for our, all day long. And I still wonder what Joe's doing now these days. I think it's Miss Tragic. Yes, indeed. A tragic waste of time. I think I think she basically said I was the Bolt, because she was asked. And I think she basically said I was the Bolt for a bassist for 30 years. Oh. What else? What? No. What else am I going to do? She doesn't want to do anything else. Carl does. Carl wants to carry on doing doing music, and he's doing stuff with um lads from Benediction and stuff. And like, yeah, that's awesome because we get nice. more of him. But I I respect I respect Joe just saying, look, no, I was the bassist from Bolt Thrower, and I mean, this is the band that made those ones loyal, recorded right. another album, and turned and around and said it's not good enough. It's not getting released. Yeah, and they basically said, we don't think we can do any better than this album that we did in 2006. And then yep. that was it. And they that didn't do it. anymore. But they carried on Never. touring and playing. And I was yeah, like, I've dude, you got to respect loads that. Of times. Got to respect it. Got to respect, respect it. it. Fucking, fucking love Bolt for They are legends for a it's reason. A, it's, it's pretty much a flawless album. Those once loyal, it's so good. Though they perfected that album. I mean, let's face it, Bolt Thrower more or less made the same album eight, <laughs> eight times. They just got it perfect the last time round. It just got better each time, yeah. So yeah, anyway, exactly. <laughs> anyway, anyway Road Trader. videos another time, another time. God damn it. Uh, right. So <laughs> moving into Rogue Trader, fucking hell, we're going to be here till like, I'm meant to be streaming with some American dudes for my movie review channel at five o'clock in the morning. Good luck. <laughs> they might actually be here till then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just stop right. and go into the office and get an hour of sleep and then be a miserable <laughs> prick for the rest of the day. <laughs> At least you'd have a good reason for it. <laughs> I need to see if that guy sent me a link actually for later. Anyway, so yeah, moving on with, with Rogue Trader. I, I was taken aback straight away by the fact that that intro for more than 100 centuries, the Emperor's sat in Mobile on the Golden Throne is more or less still what's being used today. Yeah, the, the law for the Imperium in this is pretty mm. much still the basic building blocks for the law in 40k as it is now. Although exactly. obviously they've built on it a shitload. That's how iconic this shit that Vic Priestley came up with is. Yeah. That's some fucking staying power. Did he actually do the law as well? I know he was the game designer. There's contributions from other people mm. um, noted in the in the sidebar. Uh, you've got additional material. Brian Ansell, Jim Bambra, <laughs> Nick Bibby, John Blanche. <laughs> Everyone's Jez favorite Goodwin, is Brian Ansell. Um, Rip Brian. Rip, yeah, Rip Brian. Jez Goodwin, Alan Merritt, Ali Morrison, Trish Morrison, Bob Naismith. So I have no doubt that they put some additional work in. Um, mm. Jez may well have done some stuff with design of the Space Marines, even that back, you know, back that early. Yeah. But I have no doubt that this is still 90% Rick Priestley's work. Because as I say, even when you get to the law section of this, there's still loads of rules in there. Yes. Maybe one Stuck day in. one day when GGG gets a bit bigger and a bit more noticeable, I can rope <laughs> Rick in for a chat because I'd like nothing better. I'll even make the trip down to his place because he's got a, like, a whole barn kitted out for wargaming in South. Nice. Nice. And, yeah, you and me can take a trip up there and just go and fucking have a chat with him. With, yeah. with a, a recording machine or something because I would I would honestly like nothing better than just to chat old old stuff because this is, as I say, <laughs> iconic. Machine. 
<laughs> recording machine indeed um this is this is stood the test of time it's iconic and amazing and uh, i just fucking love it but it's also yeah. massively in depth so let's get into it so the first section is obviously the rules yeah i mean i mean the book's only only what just shy of 300 pages it's 288 pages yeah 130 pages of rules <laughs> and even of the remaining 50 150 pages quite a lot of that is rules <laughs> oh, yeah i mean to be fair like i was reading through it and i was kind of like none of this is as complex as i expected it to be no, or i remembered it being complex. it's just a it's lot just, of it but it's very it's well massively explained in depth it's really yeah. dense kids these days absolutely fucking no chance in the <laughs> 80s and 90s we could handle this before the tiktok generation yeah i mean i, I mean and, i got I, I got my hard copy of this like the old the old I don't think I had a hardback one. I think mine was always a, a paperback cover version. Yeah, mine's, just, mine's a softback, yeah. So I, my mate got me into Warhammer the time I went around his house and he refused to lend me Metallica's Black Album because he'd just got it. So I think it was 1990. Honestly, that's probably a good move, to be honest, in my opinion. Well, the, black, to be fair... Black, the, album's the black Album's where it all started going tits up. <laughs> it's, what, it's what got me interested in metal in the first place, but because yeah, he really? wouldn't lend me wow. it... Yeah, because he wouldn't lend me it, he loaned me uh, a tape that had Metallica's Ride the Lightning on one side and Sepultura's as a rise on the other, and that did and the that, rest of the work. <laughs> that's, a good friend. That, that's a good friend right there. It is. Ride the Lightning still my favourite Metallica album to this day. Uh, I agree, yes. I actually, oh, no, no, I agree, I agree. It's a favourite and best... Most people I, go for Master of Puppets, I think. But most me, people I'm, do, and I can understand why in some yeah. ways, but I choose Ride like you. Um, <laughs> anyway. But I also have a massive soft spot for Injustice for All. That was my second one, actually. That was my second yeah. favourite, even um, with the ship production. Yeah, I agree. I think I put Master of Puppets third, which some people would say is absolute absolute sacrilege, but it just doesn't the low me points on Master of Puppets for me are slower and more ponderous and more skippable than those on Rider Lightning. Like for me, Rider Lightning, there was only one bad song and that's Escape. Escape, I was waiting written, to say that. I still really it's like it. It's written as a radio friendly plodder. Yeah, I and still really like it. do anything. But the rest of that album is it, absolutely peerless. Because that was the that was the, the song on the B-side of the tape. That's how fucking old I am. On the B-side of the tape that my parents allowed me to play in the car while they were driving because it was the <laughs> least heavy. <laughs> So that song always has a bit of a soft spot for me. That and Trapped Under Ice. Oh, Trapped Under Ice is incredible. That's that's the, that's the thing. Those two are next to each other, which makes yeah. Escape just look even worse, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, Call of Cthulhu, uh, fucking Creeping Death, Fight Fire with Fire, the title track, that album, I mean, Fate of Black, fucking oh. hell. Man. That album is just Amazing. unbelievable It was what, 1984? Musicianship. Uh, yeah, it's got to be around yeah. about then. Because Puppets was, what, 86? It just, took, it just took Kill em All, which is quite amateurish, but it's got a lot of spirit to it. It's raw, yeah. it's yeah, youthful yeah. energy, and they just honed that with proper musicianship. Yes. And some, the start of some of those classical, and still using a lot of Dave Mustaine stuff, but let's not forget. You know, the, the arpeggio from Call of Cthulhu that is used is basically the opening of Hangar 18 just played as an arpeggio he's, they're still using his stuff um <laughs> we should talk about more fucking metal than we ever have yeah. so far well, I wonder but... <laughs> idiots talking about i was supposed to be hearing about rogue trader instead they're talking about <laughs> shit music from the 80s and we're like it's not shit not shit shut up. um you kids weren't there <laughs> if, they're here, if people are here they should be grumpy grognards and they should be with us all the way but yeah True. they were still using some of dave's mustaine stuff cliff was still around and heavily involved and yeah no it's it's, it's peerless by the yep. lightning apart from escape which i just i just pretend doesn't exist fucking peerless love it love it it's like <laughs> I made right, if, you're, with... if you're not a grumpy grognard and you're a young person listening to this don't swear around your parents always show them respect and enjoy the rest of the podcast video. Indeed. But also go and check out Ride the Lightning immediately. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yes, getting off of Metallica. I don't even know how we got onto that Metallica. Because my, because my mate Lee got me into Warhammer at the same ah, time. Ah, yes, metal. yes, that's right. That's yes. why. You see, I got into metal slightly after that. My introduction to metal was actually um, Machine Head and Corn. So I, I missed that late night. Machine 90s. Head is a high bar if it was the oh, first album. Mate. It was the first album, and it, to my opinion, to this day, sorry, listeners, we will get back to Road Trader. That is the only that is the only album they should have ever recorded because they never beat it. 
No, they never did. In my eyes, is the best album they ever done. They never got, they never got close to it. By that miles, album was really, really, yeah, by miles. It's not even again not even another close. fairly flawless album from start to finish. Absolutely, yeah, it is. I think that one actually is flawless. I don't think the highs are as high as Ride the Lightning. No, but overall, I don't. Think, I don't think it's got any duff tracks on it at all. It's probably the best debut I ever heard. Yes, yes, for a day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was a mind blowing piece of uh, work. And I think the other thing that I heard that got me into <laughs> metal was Pantera's uh, Cowboys from Hell. Ah. Which was also equally amazing, and thankfully I missed their dodgy power metal. <laughs> Glenn, yeah, just, just, Glenn. Just before that. Diamond. There was no diamond, Daryl. Only dime bag, Daryl. Anyway, getting back into Rogue Trader. Fuck it. Vulgar display, though. <laughs> uh, Vulgar display also excellent. I I really like Far Beyond Driven. Actually, I really uh, like Far Vulgar display Driven. is probably my favourite Pantera album. It's the one I heard first, um, and I was just like, "This is amazing." And then everything I heard after that was like, "It's good for me." I didn't hear the early Metallica until after I'd heard the, the Black Album. So right. when I first heard Pantera, I was like, oh, yeah, Metallica, same. but better. <laughs> Basically. Because I, I, don't get me wrong, the Black Album is iconic and all that kind of stuff, but it is very radio-friendly and it's already yeah. quite, you know, it's, it's, it's that probably why, that, It's probably why I accepted it immediately hmm, and, yeah. and then progressed from there. So, yes, anyway. Back to yeah, Trader. anyway, we were, we were supposed to be discussing a sci-fi RPG-based skirmish game that requires a games master. Yes, this is one of my first notes. This is actually this is actually my second note after that. The intro bit about the lore is is still the same. So yeah, a games master is borderline required for this. Yeah, um, which is awesome. because it is it's it's a hybrid between an RPG and a skirmish game. Yeah, and there's so by the, like RPG DNA in here that a games master as you say is more or less required you've got like briefs for each player you've got random charts <laughs> yeah. there's a there's there's a, there's a lot of that that rpg and i've never played an rpg this might surprise some of our listeners it might not i've never played an rpg i've never what? been that great at, yeah no, i've never played never played a dnd game or anything like that i've just i've always had a problem with with pretending it might be the autism again i've always had a, a problem with pretending and that kind of thing my imagination just works in a very different way so i've never played an rpg i've always felt a little bit self-conspicuous to do it with, with other people so i want to try it sometime and i'd love to maybe get a game of wrath and glory or something like that going or maybe a call of cthulhu or something there's, I've, ne- I've never played so many so I've, many rpgs now oh, God, yeah. Uh, I've never, I've never played one. So this is like a, 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 like you say, like a hybrid RPG in many ways. It carries over many elements. But even at this early stage in the book, and we're just talking about scenery at this stage, it's so in depth. Yep. There's so much that Rick has put into this. He goes through all the different types of terrain, what they do, how you can build them, all that kind of stuff. And we get one of the first pieces of iconic artwork around here as well, which is the chapter of the Dark Brotherhood. It on page ten. Yeah. 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 And I'm not sure who the artist is. I will look them up and put them in the thing because back here they do credits. But you've got that nice cross-hatching semi-Geiger look to this artwork. Yeah. It's it defines odd. a lot of this book. A lot of this book. They're not carrying bolt guns or anything like that. They've got some kind of LAS rifle here. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a very unique and aesthetic of 40K it has not yet been finalised. We've got this very, no. very early, as I say, sort of between Geiger and 2000 AD, and some of these artists did actually go on to work on 2000 AD or had worked on 2000 yeah, AD. Yeah, I think there's a fair bit of um, artist crossover between this. There and, is quite a bit of crossover. AD. Yeah, exactly. So we then move on to the... Um, <laughs> Especially when you get to the mutant section. Oh, yes. No, big time. Yeah, well, well, I will point out some of those bits, and obviously they'll be going in the video as well. So we go on to the characteristics, and back then we had additional characteristics. So whereas yep. now with Crayon Hammer, we have fuck all characteristics. In second <laughs> edition, you had 10 characteristics. No, nine. So in second edition, you had movement, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, wounds, initiative, uh, attacks, leadership. In Rogue Trader, you also had, in another nod to RPGs, intelligence, cool, and willpower. Nope. And willpower, yeah. Although a lot of this is still alive and kicking in the current version of Necromunda. I did see that Necromunda had, had, I think it was cool, put back into it. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Which is which is which is quite cool. <laughs> God, I ah, see what you did. I can't fucking. That wasn't even intentional. I can't pretend it was. But um, other than you know, sort of the um, the last three characteristics, which were used for tests, I think mainly. tests like psychology tests. This carries through all the way up until like seventh. Yeah. Actually, um, Necromunda's got leadership, cool, willpower, and intelligence. It's still got it's still got them all there. 
holy shit that's pretty that's pretty awesome but yes it's a lot more a lot more of the characteristics and obviously a lot of this eventually got rolled back into just being leadership which yeah. I think it was fair enough. You know, willpower was used for psychics. It's like, yeah, there's no necessary. You, 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 yeah. for I mean, you lose you a little bit of granularity, but you know, it's nothing yeah, too I, much. I think the, the, the basic rule of thumb is the more models you have for a game, the more simple the rules need to be to get that game Absolutely. done and finished. Yeah. Absolutely. And as we'll find as we keep going on with this, the way that an army was made up in this was massively different to anything yep. else that followed it. Massively oh, yeah. different. So uh, as we go through, another thing I wanted to comment on, actually, I, I put the notes, because I've basically done the notes as I go through the book. That's what I, did. I noticed how, what we would call grimdark, the painting style is in this book. Yep. All very dark colours, subdued, almost like it was painted with oil paints. And we know somebody who painted some of the models in this book, Darren Matthews. Yes. Who's on the Conclave. And it, yeah, it just struck me that you had this style. And then when you got to second edition, everything was massively bright, primary colours, you know? Yeah. And then we've kind of gone back to this style, which I found quite interesting of, of that sort of almost low contrast, grimdark style. Even like the reds in this for the Blood Angels are subdued reds. They're not really bright reds or anything. I remember my old Space Marine paint set, and it vexed me because I, I was kind of trying to do my Blood Angels Terminators from the first edition of Space Hulk at the time. <laughs> and they were like, we're doing Blood Angels. Here's a terracotta. And I was like, this is nothing <laughs> like the fucking red that I want. How the hell am I supposed to do that with these two colours that you've given me? <laughs> it was, yeah, a, exactly, it was yeah. a nightmare. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's something that struck up, stuck out to me. There's no goblin green bases here. The bases no. are all brown and again subdued black black rims way back in the day. So yeah, just something I wanted to comment on because I, it did stick out to me that um, aesthetically there was a there was a big a big a big difference between this and um, and second edition. Obviously, as, as we keep going, more or less the uh, the turn sequence is more or less the same. I did like the fact that the reserves section of the yeah, turn, you can move people reserves. that haven't done stuff. No, it's not reserves. It's not bringing on extra stuff. It's, yeah, it's not as we know it. It's moving stuff that you've not done anything with. The reserves to move out, again, but not, as, but not as we know it. Mm, so that was yeah, quite cool. Yeah, my notice basically says dudes that were left out in the breeze on the table. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're nowhere near any enemies. They've not fired anything. They're not hiding. They're not in cover. They haven't done much. They get another move to get them stuck in a bit more. And I thought, yeah, I was like, is, nice. That's a good way yeah. of kicking the game along. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a very, very cool uh, concept. The next thing that I put down here was that there are so many modifiers to movement. Like, like some things make it by a half. Some things make it by a quarter. Yeah, you're rounding you get difficult up and terrain. Like, very difficult terrain. Impassable <laughs> yeah, terrain. Impassable terrain, yeah. But um, other than that, things like um, coherency is here and intact. And again, yep. exactly the same as it would be through future editions of, of Warhammer 40,000. You had firing arcs and you know degrees of fire, which would be carried through to second edition. But I think got, they got rid of it by third. I'm not sure. Um, uh, yeah, everyone basically got like a 180 degree field of view after that, didn't they? Yes, I think just, so. Yes, I think second front. edition, second edition carried four of the ninety degrees. If what I remember from the games I played of it, but from then on, it went to as you say uh, a, a wider field of fire. But again, turning your marine would take off some of your movement, so the calculation yeah. would just be absolutely horrific f for moving. Like moving could take a long time. This isn't just where you pick your model up and go right, yeah, just move it <laughs> six inches yeah. or whatever. This would be like yeah, no, right, it, everything <laughs> mattered. <laughs> Everything mattered. Everything affected your movement, which again, yeah. probably a step too far, and and that's why a, a lot of it went away. But then um, again, for a skirmish game where if you've got twenty models, you've got a ridiculously sized massive force. This is perfectly viable. Exactly. In this, you're looking to be using like maybe twenty, you know, twenty to as you say. I, mean, I, I was twenty, 20 is probably the most at a push. At a push. You're at probably a looking push. like 10, 10 models in the dreadnought or something like that, and then maybe a commander yeah. or something. Yeah, you exactly. Know, you really are looking at a very very small scale game here. Yeah, it's more like the Necromunda scale. Mm, yes, absolutely. Or as we say, like the, the new game that we're, we're so excited about, Trench Crusade. So um, <laughs> yeah, but one other it, thing it, mentioned in scale, I found very interesting, is it actually mentions like one. It, it relates a lot more stuff to to the real world in this. To the real so world, kind of, yes, exactly. It one inch represents one inch, two meters. Two meters, yeah, absolutely, yeah, six foot or so, yeah. Which um, again was this is almost it's, it is a game, but it's not 
strict it's, it's like a framework of game it's, rules to put you in this universe exactly and for you to create your own yeah. games so it, it started off really is. detailed and it just slowly became more abstract over time as they stripped out elements to well save time because they wanted to sell well, to more models you, to people you, and people had bigger armies yeah, I'm using more models on the table. Yeah. So we see what are the first of many, many, many tables of modifiers, things to hit. But again, a lot of this carries through to to second edition. But just to hark through to the, the role-playing aspects of this game, there's things like you can throw stones and bricks yeah. and pottery and, and, <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, just anything goes, like really RPG. Like if your player thinks of it, you can do it. Yeah, it's and definite bricks, framework. And Rick's probably covered it in some way yeah. or another. Yeah, yeah. There was a bit about um, flying troops, like jump infantry and stuff like that. They can mm. spend a turn leaving the table, tooling themselves up with whatever they could find off of the table, and yep, then coming and back on and dropping it on yeah. people. <laughs> Is that there was a bit as well for like um, cutting Excellent. through buildings, cutting yeah, holes yeah. and walls hacking and stuff. Through, like hacking through walls, so, yeah. Yep. So cool. So, uh, yeah, again, a lot that of this fist. gets well done. carried through. Yeah, Not yeah, like I think the chain fists in this. I don't think I power fists definitely so. power fists definitely were but I don't um, think chain, I don't think they evolved into think... chain fists at that point but a lot of the rest of it has is, is more or less the same you've got modifiers to your saving throws yeah um, and that's got... the, uh, I've always thought that is uh, and I don't again I don't know if it's because this was technically my first version of 40k but when you're in cover it should be a modifier to hit like it is yes. like in Necromunda or yeah Titanicus. As, as well as being harder to damage your target it's harder to see your to target. see it exactly and you can't really hit something that you can't see very well yeah which is why you always had soft cover hard cover minus one yep. minus two to hit that's it and then you had range and crap like that on top whereas now and it's it, just uh, roll 30 dice re-roll all your ones and, yeah, and slaughter and sweep stuff off the table you know so um no absolutely yeah and and when i did my uh, bolt action video i said like in bolt action you roll 10 dice you're lucky to hit with three of them mm. Because it's World War Two, and, you know, you were squeezing off rifle shots and stuff. You weren't, you know, one of you might have a Bren or something like that. Yeah, most you weren't hosing you just, down, hosing you down there in the battlefield. Down and wiping stuff out. No, exactly. So one thing that was very different, though, and this did make me chuckle, because you can tell that Rick's based this as a framework, and he hasn't had any of the bespoke stuff that Games Actually came up with later. Mm. So when he wanted to work out how to deviate things, he had to use a D6 yeah. or D12. So he did, he did a clock face and went, roll a D12, and that's because there was no scatter dice. No, but there so are he templates. Did a clock face there are, are cut, cutoutable blast templates at the back of the book. There are indeed. Yep, absolutely. And depending on how big the, excuse me, depending on how big the explosion was, was how likely it was to deviate. Yes. Also which, again, true. was a very, very cool way of doing things. But you had hidden areas. You had um, slow weapons, which we call heavy weapons now. Yeah, uh, you can't, can't move and fire them. They had yeah, exactly. that, that just slowed you down because they were literally heavy. Just, yeah, they were just heavy. And then you had following fire weapons, which were basically sustained fire. Yeah, yeah so, so if you, you cause a like, wound, you get to fire again. Yeah, exactly. So you get to ch- target people next to it and stuff. And again, you know, a lot of the rest of it, uh, certainly the hand-to-hand combat, carried through quite well to second edition. Yeah, what I thought uh, was quite funny was it, it specifically says, like, close assault is kind of like very much secondary to ranged fire in this version <laughs> in, this, yes. in this game yeah exactly but then when you like when you do get to close combat again in another move that got a little bit over the top you had loads of different types of attacks so they give the catch and devil as an example you've got stomp bite gore claw, yes tail. that's right different creatures get different attacks and you've got different areas uh, sorry, different arcs for those different attacks. And I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, this could take a long time. Because it's really back that... in the day where it'd be like, <laughs> the, the GM goes, huh, troll, lol, lol, here's a catch and devil to deal with. You know? yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't know where it's popped up from, <laughs> given that it's, yeah, exactly. it's about a 30 foot long scorpion. It's popped up from somewhere. <laughs> Good luck. And it's like, thanks. While I'm running away, I blundered into a Venus man trap. And my commander <laughs> ran into a forest thinking he was safe and got his face eaten off by a Kachan face eater. Even which worse. looks like a flannel <laughs> like... in a tree. <laughs> Surprise! Cut things! Yeah, Terror just squirrel. dropped on Terror him and killed him. <laughs> yeah, Terror Squirrel as well. But that's Terror with a P, by the way, not <laughs> like a, a, a Terror really Squirrel. Exactly. So yeah, we, we've got all that, and then we've got another iconic piece of artwork, and it is, even though people may not recognise it, because there were no Primarchs, Lehman Russ. <laughs> Space Marine Commander, not a Primarch, because they didn't nope, exist. No, there was no Primarchs then. I think the Horus uh, Heresy is literally one little paragraph in this. I, I didn't even notice it the when Heresy, I was looking no, through. The Horus Heresy isn't in it. 
I think it's mentioned very briefly. I'm going to do a sex search in a minute. I'm literally just... Think, uh, do a text search, but I don't think the Horus Heresy is in this at all. Hmm. I think it actually came later in one of the compendiums or something, because I think okay. Alan Merritt wrote Oh, it, it might have been chapter might be approved. Wrong. Yeah, I think it was in chapter approved. I might be wrong, but I don't think the Horus Heresy is in this at all. You've got Liam <laughs> Russ in this, and yeah, he's not a Primarch, no beard, no long hair, none of that shit. He's all scarred up. He's got loads of bionics. He's just a space marine commander. The space wolves did not ride wolves. None of that Viking <laughs> shit. They were just called space wolves. Yeah. That's what it's called. Um, and and it actually says on a, here. A yellow wolf's head with a red outline. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Appointed Imperial commander of Lucan because they were the, um, they came from Lucan, not Fenris. That was the second edition mm-hmm. thing. Not like um, and Not like no, Lucan. Space wolves suffered. Severe aviola damage uh, during acid storms on Susa, transplanted with model Cybron Osmotic Gill M32. So, and they actually got a birthday for him, 26th oh, oh. of the 12th, 16 M32. So, yes. Um, so, yeah, other than that, as I say, mostly what carries through to second combat with the shooting combats, uh, chasing down, rallying, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got some more of that cool artwork, different styles coming in here. Not so much uh, Geigerish here, more the 2000 AD kind of style. And then you've got that really cool piece of Eldar mercenaries, because as we find out when we get to the law, there's no such thing as the aspects or the path of the Eldar or no. the Farseers or any of that kind of stuff. They're the just Eldar's space strictly- elves. They're basically pirates, space of pirates, yeah, exactly. So as we go on, we get the morale stuff, we go through that, blah, 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 blah. They can test not to pursue the reserve stuff. Yeah, that was really interesting. So when when you beat someone in combat, you need to take a leadership test to not pursue them if they route and run away. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Which, again, would, would kind of follow in various ways in other games but only for something like frenzy and stuff like that you didn't have to do it as a rule yeah. so yeah your leadership tests are fairly fairly basic you've got buildings in here and as i say you can cut through buildings which is pretty cool hacking through walls <laughs> um and again you've got rules for like solid timber doors plastic tough and glass like wooden door light steel heavy steel tough and steel nothing like ceramite or plast steel or anything like that in this from what i remember nope. Again, that all comes in a little bit later. It's all far more grounded. Um, exactly, yeah. Then you've got your vehicle rules. Oh, um, mate. The, which, the again, fucking very, vehicle rules. Yeah, very, very... How far can my vehicle turn? Well, it's it's now got a turn radius on, you basically... ratio stat, which, <laughs> like, is, you... uh, which is like the forward speed of the vehicle in <laughs> inches multiplied by the turn radius number. And I was like, it's, it's... ugh. It's basically, do you rem- do you remember your formula and maths yeah. from school? So, this yeah, is why again, you have it's... one vehicle per side at the most. As kids, we did it. You know, we did yeah. it. A lot of us carried out. through to second edition and we just fucking worked it out. And Didn't it even cool have a fuck. calculator or a phone. <laughs> nope. <laughs> what, I ha- what I have noted here is there was no vehicle location chart. No. Was something that came in on second edition. I, uh, uh, no, have... I think it, it was first, but it was in the vehicle manual, which I think was in the vehicle manual, slightly I... preceded second edition. Never had the vehicle manual. Is that the thing that had the transparent templates with it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mine's yeah. downstairs on the shelf never had that so what i do want to do and hopefully jordan isn't listening to this and won't do this as well before we get to second edition <laughs> jordan, <laughs> nobody, t- nobody tagging um before we get to second edition because obviously that is where we're headed i would really like to cover the transitional period in between with the compendiums mm. and the vehicle manual and um, i think we have access to all that stuff so we will do the separate video before we get to second edition let's milk this as much as we can <laughs> yeah Oh mate! But yeah, you've got. Yeah, go on. If you want to go through the vehicle stats, I was going to say the vehicle stuff. You've got the special damage table, which is very cool, and, yeah. and gives you a lot of those those <laughs> smell of burn. bits. Smell of burning, number eleven. Smell of burning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go and, bang um, at any point. It's going to go bang at some point. But again, as you say, although you would hate to use this with the amount of vehicles people fill these days, back then you had like one dreadnought or maybe a tank. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you didn't have all that much stuff, but I love the fact that if you you can push, you can punch it, Bishop. Yeah, you've got, a danger of the, you've got a danger of the vehicle going out, going of, control. out of control. Yeah, you can move it. You can push its speed beyond the maximum speed. That was another thing that I found really interesting about weapons is that we've got short range and long range, which again carried over into present day Necromunda and Adeptus Titanicus. Well, some weapons can fire five to ten times beyond their maximum range. But to do so, you need to roll a six on a D6 first. And then roll your normal to hit with any other modifiers for stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like that one guy is getting away and you're like, I think I got this. Line up the shot, get the six. It's like, and then then roll to hit him as he gets him. Like in Crocodile Dundee with a tin of beans. 
<laughs> yeah, long range. <laughs> <laughs> it was like um, I was playing um, Masters of the Universe Battlegrounds with Kirsty because I got that on a, a mm. paper paying free to review for the channel because I've got nothing else to review and I wanted something to review. <laughs> and um, we played that and I was using the useless little bastard Orco. <laughs> and he has, take, he has to take a test before he can cast a spell. But isn't that all he did <laughs> was cast spells? It was badly. So it's in, it's in it's in law, but I was using him and I was just like, oh man, he's got all these, gave him all these spells. I was like, oh, he's got a manner of six. He's really, really good. And it's, there's this little rule called Lol. Traveler from Traveler from Troller or something. <laughs> yeah, if you even want to cast a spell, you've got to pass the test first. And I was like, fuck's sake. So there's a few times he did <laughs> absolutely nothing. But it's quite a fun game, actually. The review will be positive. Okay, nice. Anyway, moving on, uh, we've got Dreadnoughts and the law is completely different. No damage. Mostly different. Mortally wounded space marine, just a dude yeah. sitting in a suit. Although it is a dude sitting in a suit encased in jelly with a spinal link. So yes, I'm absolutely, like, it's not entirely different, but it ain't keeping him alive is, and he's not nearly if, dying. If the dreadnought <laughs> blows up, he can just get out and go, ah. Yeah, you can get an ejector seat for it. <laughs> Imagine that, <laughs> you know, ejecting so. out and just going, <laughs> just going <laughs> into a field covered in jelly like you've just arrived from Terminator. <laughs> Like just like yeah, yeah the Terminator or Matrix. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, diff- different law there. I thought it was kind of, it was kind of cool. And then we get on to the batshit crazy part. <laughs> where we're like, Rick, calm Robot. down, calm down. There's a reason this didn't make it into second edition. Robots. Dependent on the um, dependent on the robot itself, you have to. I do remember. Depending on the robot, so what they do is they do robots, then they do flyers, and then they they definitely go back to robots at some point. Yeah, I think robots, some are, robots are wrong when you get different types of robots or specific. Yeah, robots exactly. Because there's some robots you've got to plan their moves three turns in advance. Yeah, because they're too thick. Because <laughs> they're too thick, so you've got yeah. to program them. I thought that was quite is... interesting because you've got the smaller robots more capable, like. I don't want to say intelligent, but they've got more yeah, processing but... power than the larger robots. So, yeah, the so you only ones... have to do their move one turn in advance. Yeah, whereas the whereas the bigger the robot, the like the more <laughs> turns in advance you had to plan its moves. And I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> just, you yeah. Know, yeah, again, just, yeah, Rick, maybe a touch too much. But I mean, yeah, admirable. They've done something different. But yeah, I think we're going to get onto that a little bit anyway. But the other thing that is absolutely mental for this is the rules for flyers. <laughs> yeah. Somewhat all involved. The different, somewhat involved, indeed, with all the different <laughs> levels. And again, yeah, more, more, more Pythagoras's theorem required for the yep. firing angles and Triangles what level they friends. are. And also, oh my God, yeah. I found that very interesting where you've kind of got like, there's four different flight, like height levels and each one of them yeah. is like separated by 10 inches. And that is added onto the weapon ranges if you want to fire to and from that flyer. And I was like, mm-hmm. nice. So you can literally yeah. put it out of range of small arms. <laughs> And then just it's have not to shoot like, heavy weapons and stuff. It's not like that game against Lee where you just aimed his heavy, flame, heavy flamers up and flamed the fuck out of your. Um, that was. I think that was. I think flyer. that was my first game of eighth. I think it was, and I was like, "Fly over your lad, Raider Redeemer," and he just went whoosh and hosed it, and I was like, what "Fuck, are you doing?" And he was like, "Just hosed it down with my." With my <laughs> it's like that. With sounds, my flamestorm cannons, like and I was like, bullshit. "I was like, you can't do that." And he was like, "Yeah, I can," and I was like, you "Really, you tricks, can you, tricksy bastard?" <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. A new edition. And he was like, lol, I kill you yeah. now. I was like, I'm not playing you again. Jeez. <laughs> wouldn't, be, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to uh, do that again. Um, no. He's I've very got mostly, I think I've got a mostly unbeaten record against Lee. He's, he's got me a few times. Um, Shine off. Beat his neck. Uh, <laughs> I've played many, many, many games at Lee, including second edition. Um, <laughs> love my games second edition with Lee. I remember one game I played it. in such a fucking troll. I killed his avatar. And back then you had... Um, you had uh, strategy cards, so he brought his avatar back to life. So I had to fucking kill it all over again. <laughs> and I did with a scout sergeant with a bolt pistol. <laughs> <laughs> those unlikely kills are some of the best ones. Oh, they're some of the, they're, they're, honestly, those moments are just the best. They are, as you say, the yeah. best thing. And you just don't get it these days because you just roll bunch no. of dice and sweep stuff off the table. There's yeah. no, there's none of those crazy moments. It sucks. No, it lacks the randomness and the detail to actually get decent, like exactly. stories. The like granularity that out of stuff. just, it, yeah, like, the granularity yeah. just isn't. I saw, there. I saw some nobody space marine plink all the last wound off a rampaging great and clean one with a bolt pistol. Exactly, magnificent, it's, it's just fantastic, fantastic stuff. And those things so, were horrific. Oh, they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Especially, Terrific especially with Iron Arm. Especially, it was, mm. especially if it was the Worcesterer and his one with Iron Arm, and it was like toughness <laughs> and strength nine or something insane like that. And it was just like you absolute bustard. Why do I play against you? The only way I was ever able, able, able to beat Worcesterer was by using flamers. 
like literally just <laughs> massive spamming flamers and going cloud just of flies hosed. shroud just, yeah and just fucking, hosed all your spray don't, don't fucking care mate <laughs> the yeah, yeah, only time I beat him was using my tyranids and that was because he didn't know what half of them did oh okay <laughs> that'll do it he was, he was he was pretty learned on his stuff though he, he was surprised. a he knew, good player he, he was a good player he knew a lot of shit a lot of shit I miss um, him David the Worthra yes. return to us stop come fucking about in America <laughs> Come back from come back. America land, Dave. Come on, come back. Um, so, yeah, next up you had personalities, not characters per so, so much, personalities. And you had yeah, those, it was like the old version of independent characters. Yes, yeah, you had um, like uh, different levels of hero, hero and champion and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and when you get and, to the costs <clears throat> later on, them heroes get steep. Yes, I want to talk about the costs as well when we get to it because they are so different to... The po- points cost not just now, but of any edition of 40k, where mm. you're paying for points, uh, characteristic points, if you know what I mean, almost. So there's no set points really yeah. for all these different types of things. It was like you paid for how good it was, which yeah. is very Basically, interesting. Basically, I think it was a standard human stat line, which was a template for everything else, it was like yeah. five points. And then as you deviated those stats up and down, you either got points back yeah. or you lost them and then you added war gear and equipment and stuff on top, on top. of that yeah exactly maths that would so, just yeah, make like Timmy's, a, Timmy's yeah. head explode these days yeah like a like a, a dreadnought suit was plus 25 points to that so a basic dreadnought was like yes so you had your different armor, arm, arm, armor and stuff like that yeah well we're getting near, yeah. near nearish the end of what they call the rules the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first 130 pages before the they go core oh, no, rules no. more <laughs> accurately core rules. and uh, we move on to psychics and psychics were done very psionics <laughs> yes psionics <laughs> done very very differently and they were a resource so you had uh, psychic points basically that you could use to cast spells and once you cast those spells you basically lost your resource points so the more yeah. you cast the harder it was to cast consecutive powers which was quite a yeah. clever way of doing things so but as anyone the who knows way... the librarians those there's four, the four different levels of mastery which i think yes, carried yes. over into into later editions quite well they did although um, they just got called different things you know the caduceus yeah. pistol and then and then i think it was uh, like Mexicanium. so yeah i think mastery one which was the basic one started off with with 10 side points and then it kind of went up in increments of ten, like up to up to mastery four. Yes. Or you could randomly generate them, and I think I think mastery level four could roll twelve d six. Yes. <laughs> to, see, yeah. to see how many the points only, they got. The only way you could get them back was by resting was for an entire resting. turn. That's right. Yeah, you, you do only nothing. Got one. Yeah, you do only nothing for a whole turn. <laughs> you get one point back. But you could take like um, you could take a force rod which stored extra points in it. Which stored the points. Yeah, exactly. Which is what four swords originally did. Uh, force weapons yeah. originally, originally did. No, um, like a battery, and then you get loads and loads of psychic powers 40. in another absolute nod to RPG time. There's it's 40 just, you know, different like, powers. All these different like, levels abilities. I think there's four different levels and each one's got 10 powers in it, at least. Yeah, but then we come to what is probably my favourite part of the book. <laughs> mutants. It's the batshit section. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like, you want all the mutations? Here's all the mutations. There's literally oh. nearly 100 different mutations that you can yeah, put on your on a, mutants. Yeah, on a day 100. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's Absolutely so bad. Rick, it's like, Rick. It's, it's like acid excretion, <laughs> albino, arms elongate at will. It's like Inspector Gadget, atrophied limbs, beak to bestial face, beweaponed extremities, big big ears. Crystalline bird, body. Bird feet, black skin, yeah, breathes fire. Brightly patterned <laughs> skin, which I thought would affect how you can hide, but it does nothing. And there's like bulging eyes that give you infrared yeah, just, vision. Yeah, just, just superficial. Just, yeah, absolutely. some of them did stuff, some of them didn't. Yeah, absolutely batshit. Yeah. Hopper, Clo- horrible stench, hunchback. Horrible stench. Hypnotic yeah, I mean, you, you could basically make a plague bearer out of some yeah. of these. There was, yeah, this um, is, and again, this is before demons even existed. Even yeah. you know, there was no demons, there was no chaos. As a yeah, thing. Yeah, extra, extra joints, extremely thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just uh, minus, so yeah, one, minus one strength and impossible to. And this is what I love. Yeah, I mean, like this is where some of the real character for the book shines through. So I'm just going to read extremely thin. Yeah, go for it. The character is unnaturally thin and emaciated. Bones protrude through st- skin. Ribs stick out like keys on a piano. Eyes <laughs> bulge comically. Such creatures have their strength reduced by one to a minimum of one and find it impossible to buy clothes in chain stores. <laughs> I <just fucking laughs> love it. And then at the other end, there's, an, there's enormously fat as well. 
Yes, yes. Well, you wouldn't get away back these days either, unfortunately. No. But yeah, no. uh, fatty like, yeah, attempting like... to go through a normal sized door hatch will get stuck on DC roll, <laughs> D six roll of a four, five, or six. <laughs> Brilliant. That's absolutely great. Oh. That was another thing when you had like hatches and, and doors, like as exit points and entry points in vehicles. Like per door allowed out a number of models based on their movement. So if they were yeah. really slow, you could only get one person out of the door <laughs> as a turn. Everybody's like, Jim, get out of the fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> fucking move it. <laughs> Sorry, fat Jim. You're taking yeah. a while. So but yeah, much. like out of these mutations and stuff, you could literally take like like bulging eyes, cloud of flies, and there was another one to do with skin, which is mm, yeah. escaping me at the moment. And I'm, and I'm kind of like, that's like a plague bearer. So mm-hmm. if you wanted like a plague bearer type character, then bosh. But you've got nearly good. sort of unlimited there's so many i mean you've even got multiplication like yeah for limbs uh, pink, and stuff pink horrors pink horrors yeah. before horrors you can split you know like almost by um not osmosis what's it called uh we'll go with that mitosis oh you go close the one the moronic yeah, it's, been it's been a while since i did science at school this creature yeah, yeah. Mor- moronic this creature is congenitally dense <laughs> yeah. The intelligence score remains as normal, but every time the creature uses a piece of equipment, it must test to see if the task is completed correctly. This applies no matter how simple the item, e.g. a door handle, sword, or button. The creature is completely unable under any circumstances to open cartons of milk or yogurt. It just just makes me think of Red Dwarf, it really does. It's just that kind of... Yeah, this creature has a tiny head, barely big enough to support its shrunken little face intelligence is reduced by minus one oh, just, i wonder oh. if any of this carried over from like the original fantasy because obviously i'm assuming that there was mutants in that as well yeah maybe but, like yeah, beast men and stuff i love oh. this, this one silly walk an extreme mannerism in the creature's <laughs> perambulatory technique endows it with a ridiculous gait no rules no rules just because just yeah. because and probably because of monty python yeah just, i'm right in flesh that was the other one scaly yeah, skin yeah. Shrink. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Silly we, have to, we have to have a chat with Rick at some point. It'd yeah, skull face. This creature has a head in the form of a skull, <laughs> and that's it. And that's even in the picture directly above it. There's like a yeah. picture oh, of like, like, a, like a skull face with like a, a big hoop earring. It's awesome piece of art. Awesome piece of artwork. Yeah, that's um, so good. There's yeah, the head just, with yeah. arms and legs. <laughs> yeah, there's like fantastic. a basement goat. Trans- transparent skin. No rules, no reason, just because. <laughs> it's just there. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, that's my, yeah. probably my favourite part of the book. I just there's just so much character and irreverence baked into that it's one so section funny. of rules. Three eyes. This common this common mutation endows the mutant with three eyes. This makes it very hard to buy spectacles, but makes no difference to the creature otherwise. Exactly. It's just it's all red dwarf. I don't know if you've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, yes. but it's it was like a that time kind ago, of vibe. Yeah. Silly that humor. kind of vibe in there. Yeah, exactly. Silly humour. British irreverent humour that we were known for at the time. <laughs> walking and, head. Yeah. <laughs> walking head and there's a bit this of a picture of it as well. creature into a simple <laughs> walking head with arms and legs directly attached to its oversized skull. Doesn't stop it from wearing power armour, I notice. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and stuff like that. Or but using a shotgun. Happy quite happily sit there for half an hour just rolling up these random mutations and just stick them in the game you know yeah it's so cool yeah so it's cool. All random on a d100 and then as you Fantastic. say quite rightly you've got the point system including in which another moment i'm like rick no please half <laughs> points half yeah. points oh, half the points. plasma pistol's four and a half points what the fuck <laughs> I just imagine showing Gen Z this and just watch their brain just melt and just, just like melt, yeah. flow out through their nostrils or something, yeah. you know. Plasma gun, five and a half <laughs> points. Heavy plasma gun, 50 points. <laughs> Quite a leap. Yeah, and then you've got the grenades and you've got mines and like yeah. toxin gas grenade, half a point. Oh There's my God. Loads of, loads of grenades and missiles in this, loads. Uh, yeah. And then you got you got points for dreadnought and vehicles, and this is this is just fantastic. So you got as you say yeah. twenty five points for a dreadnought. That was a, yeah, I remember. But then your that. maximum your maximum land speed is quarter of a point per one inch. Yeah, for vehicles. <laughs> it's like it's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, the other thing with vehicles is they had an acceleration and deceleration rate, so they couldn't just stop dead you in a turn. Just stop on a dime. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which again goes back to like you're you're going out of out of control and and, and stuff like that. Yeah, just absolute, just just mental. Like you, you can't help but admire the work put into it. Yep. Like the breadth of the work is just absolutely incredible. But fuck me. 
<laughs> you mad absolutely bastard. i mean like, yeah i mean look at look at the equipment list i mean it's it's not yeah. particularly exhaustive but it's like what auto senses an auto system bio scanner a, a bomb bot breathing apparatus and underneath that you've got artificial gill filters gills masks respirators chameleon line chameleon line yeah 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 that's the one communicator ejector seats for vehicles five points risky <laughs> business eye protectors visors contacts drops drops eye drops <laughs> yeah it's just power absolutely canopies, power field generators crazy. rad counters rad suits sealed suits suspensors Polymor- heavy weapons polymorphines polymorphines the one that allows assassins to change that's the one you're thinking of that was it yeah yeah one dose of that is 15 points by the way so be careful yeah. again this was just you were you were given the a framework pa- a power board if you ever wanted power a board. hoverboard <laughs> yeah, to, hoverboard, fl- to yeah. scooch about on um, as you say, I mean, it's it's a framework to make your own adventures. Yeah. And, there's no and missions. The, there's none of that. It's just make your own adventures. I mean, he gives you scenarios that you yeah. can use. Yeah, I mean, that's where a GM like, comes Lots of in. different scenarios for the, for the GM to give their briefings and stuff. And we're going to get that into a second because the next bit is Battle for the Farm. But it's a framework. They're just giving you a framework to play your own games. And that means that the rules can be like this and be kind of loose because it's up to you to come yeah. to... To, you know, to, 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 most, to do to do the to do the legwork, if you know what I mean. You've been given the framework. It's like, all right, but you use this. You go off and make your games. Yeah, and you I make your it. game good. It. It's not up to us yep. to make your game good. You do it exactly. Um, yep. I and I, I think, to an extent, Games Workshop have always encouraged that, even right up to present day. I've always said to people, people are like, "Ooh, this rule shit," and I'm like, if the whole rule set is shit like it is now, then that's one thing. If there's particular aspects of the rule set that you don't like, then just house rule them in. Yeah, and yeah, people absolutely. Are fine it's, with it's always, it. like, it's always tournament been Tournament organisers have done it for decades. It's, yeah, it's literally 40k and stuff. It's a framework mm. for creating games with your mates. That's all it is. Like, if you want well, to be with second with edition, rules, fine. Like, if you don't, with, fine. With second edition, when we get to that, if you bought the main box and got the rule books and everything, yeah, all right, you got War Gear, all that kind of stuff in there, but there was no psychics. Dark Millennium had all the psychics. Mm. So you had two levels. You had like an easy, like, there's your second edition. And then when you've got to grips with your second edition, you can bump it up by buying Dark Millennium, which has got loads of war gear and psychics and other bits in it. You know, you nice. level up your game. So that's how it works. A bit like this, where you've got very rudimentary vehicle rules to start off with, but then they published a vehicle manual, which as I say, I never had. And then mm. you moved on with that. But Rick, please calm down. Why am I <laughs> playing two and a quarter points for a fucking rippy fish. A rippy or two, fish. And a, two and a quarter points for a terror squirrel. <laughs> Rick, yeah. why? Why? Oh, I'm yeah, going to get sucks. 34 <laughs> points for a small dinosaur, though. A cof- giant insectoid. A cof- 73 a points for a giant insectoid. About them <laughs> large mantises, Alan, that you're so terrified of if they were real. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they got to three, four foot cross, we're done as a species, I told you. Um, yeah. Cofelon <laughs> Cudbear is 128 <laughs> points. Yeah, um, but I mean, look at the marine <laughs> points. It's like a, a basic human is five points. A basic yep. human marine is eight. I'm eight assuming points. this is. I'm assuming this is before power armor and stuff. Um, yeah, you, you got to yeah pay for the armor separately. Yeah. yeah, a champion is nine points. A minor hero, sixty nine. Yeah, a major, <laughs> a major hero, hero is one hundred and twenty four. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Like, uh, the, is that guy going to win the game by himself? It's like they're he's, saying that, that, the that major of hero over, of over is fifty four, people. Fourteen times as good. As a basic marine, that's the one. It's mad. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, no, no. Sorry, my my maths is is is, is wrong there. It's, it's uh, getting, like, 15, my maths 15, well. 15, 15 times is good. But yeah, you've got yeah your human, human marines, beastmen, because you've got your humans. We'll, we'll, we'll get to listen a bit. We'll, we'll get to listen a bit. We'll move on. So we've got battle for the farm, which is the one. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I need oh, to oh, zoom oh, in oh. on that. A halfling. Yep. Is two points and three quarters. Yes. A champion <laughs> three halfling. Quarters. Champling halfling is four points and three quarters. Three quarters. That's half it's what? Three quarters. Basically. Sorry. It's, yeah, it's that halfling joke. It's that. It's that a small person stroke that us big people don't get. Yeah, yeah exactly. Maybe I should. It's, maybe it's it should have been around the other way. Is that a large mental. person stroke that us little people don't get because yeah, we don't yeah. find it very funny? Matt, what? what uh, it's, it's, it's mental. It's just I. I, just, I can't. Can't. I've, I said I've not looked at these books for so long. And I was reading. I was just like, no, I, I love it. Little people I, out there. I love it, but oh, mental. So yeah, on to Battle of the Farm, which is the scenario yeah. they run us through. And, Go for um, it. Like, they did a modern version of this as well, didn't they? They did. Very, they did they've done two, recently. actually. They've done two. So they did one when the Praetorians come out, if you remember the Praetorians, like Zulu, 
<clears throat> so you had all the lads in their red British uniforms um, against all. Oh, Imperial Guard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you wouldn't be able to get away with that these days. So when they did the new one, they did it again with Space Marines. But it was originally yeah, Space Marines. Yeah, as it Marines. was originally, yeah. It was yeah, originally yeah. Imperial Fists, wasn't it? Um, Crimson Fists. Crimson Fists, not Imperial Fists. Imperial Fists did not exist in this, I think. Nope. I think. So yeah, you've got player briefs and stuff like that. Again, still very much with that RPG. The GM's encouraged to not interfere, but to influence the game. It's got well, a very could strong... Interfere. Very strong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. As they say, catch the devil. Here you go. Ha, have fun. Um, yeah. You've got the um, the whole idea where the, the orcs are after treasure. It's all very, still very basic. The orcs aren't fully formed. The marines aren't fully formed. Oh, it's the, just this kind of the terrain. Um, this kind of universe. And you've got, but you have got the, the the early elements of the the law where you've got Nurin City and the space marines have had a missile fall on their armory, destroying it. So that's and all Pe- there. Pedro Cantor. Pedro Cantor. Name. Pete. Pete Cantor. And there's, there's more of that later as well. So, yeah, you've got your GM's brief. You've got your brief, brief your different players. You've got the points for, you know, uh, for, for the scenario. So it is all there, but it's all very loose framework format. Yep. Which is quite nice. And they're like literally like, oh, that's 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 four pages where we've not had any any tables or anything. So we're gonna move on to equipment. So you've yeah, got basic weapons, much. close weapon combat weapons, heavy weapons, very heavy weapons, heavy weapons yeah. grenades. <laughs> grenades and shells, mines and support weapons. Support weapons, yeah. planetary defences, it's like quite Planetary defences, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So again, Rick, calm down. Yeah, and but I like the way it, it says in in the little section that says the use of larger weapons, and it kind of just says we've included things up to planetary scale weapons just for completeness. We strongly yeah. recommend that people don't actually include them in their games unless they're yeah. an objective. Please don't use them on the players. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Your entire army's dead. Um, yeah, exactly. All, yeah, all I, eleven I, I, of them. Again, this is where you start getting loads of um, sort of random generation coming in as well. Yep. So yep. D100s we're on the, again. Exactly. We're now on page 69. And they're like, yeah, we're not done yet, lads. We're, we're, no. we're still going. We're still no, going. Nowhere near done. And another thing to, um, to mention is that uh, in comparison to what you get these days, the book is very light on uh, illustration, both photos and artwork. Oh, there's a fair bit of about, artwork, I'd say. There's a fair bit of it, but it's, it's quite small. And yeah, it's, it's scattered around a lot yeah, of the places. It's, it's not focused it's, it's in one not bit. Not as much of it as there, there is. Yeah. Um, Speaking of page is... sixty-nine, one thing that always struck me about this page, and I always remembered this little illustration. Mm. There's a picture of two Mark Six Marines at the bottom of the page getting hit by incoming fire. One of them's firing, the other one's getting proper fucked. He's been hit yep. twice, and he's been hit twice so hard that his backpack and his hand come out of the picture frame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which and is I was nice, like, nice oh, touch. nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like he's not not even wearing gauntlets. It's just got rather rather skinny hands. Yeah. Um, well, Marines back then were a bit different. Far yeah. More. Oh no, very very different. They were just they were just roided nutters. Like yeah, like mercenary monks that yeah, frequently exactly. did security work and stuff like that. And frequently went off and did their own thing as well. Um, yeah. You know they were, they were as I say were in the nascent. And even it's impressive. Even though it's impressive what Rick did, and we're going to get into it in the law. It's very nascent form of of the imperium and and you know, a lot of work was done between now and second edition so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll keep going because otherwise we're never gonna get to the law but basically yeah. loads of loads of random charts uh cool pictures of guns with chapter approved chapter approved was a thing back then even bows gave, there's bows yeah, in there as bows well and also well, a sawn off shotgun which looks nothing like a sawn off shotgun a, musket. And, and a, a lot of this would make an appearance in the war gear book in second edition yeah even a sling so, a sling yeah, musket, slings pistol. yeah all sorts of random you've got shuriken catapult all sorts of just oh, so much stuff antique pistols combat accessories you know but you've yep. got your, uh, you've got your four sword and everything <laughs> like that it, <laughs> improvised weapon improvised it's got, it's a, it's got a, mil- a milk bottle and then a, what <laughs> and looks like a police truncheon and then just a fist, yeah. <laughs> and a fist. <laughs> but then when, you, when you've got your orcs here you've got a picture of orcs with what looks very much like the colonial marines from aliens Though these would have come out more or less the same time, it's it's all very sort of like mixed together. Oh yeah, yeah, there graffiti, is the back, yeah. graffiti on his helmet and stuff, you know. Um, I think it's quite heavily probably Vietnam influenced. I'd think. Yeah, I would think With so. The, the customization and the look. It, it, it's um. I don't know. It's he, has shot, he has got his shotgun for close encounters. The Orcs were totally different. The Orcs, as it's we very get into Hicks. It, it's very, very Hicks. Hicks. 
as we get on, um, as we get on, we'll see that the the New Yorks are totally, totally different. So yeah, yeah. we've got neuro disruptors. You've got all this stuff, but a lot of it does look like the plasma pistol looks more or less like what ended up in second edition and carried yeah. the, all the way through to a lot of the, know, later editions. A lot of the designs are pretty much still spot on. Like auto pistols look the same. Plasma pistols look. They really are. Slightly. I mean, it's, plas- it's, plasma guns look slightly less bulbous, but a stub still the gun same thing. is basically just a nine eleven. Pistol. It is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is, yeah, it's a Colt 911. Yeah, yeah you've got the hand flamers that <laughs> the same. Needle <laughs> pistols are pretty much the same. Power yeah, axes yeah, well, are like the old yeah. school power axes that used to get with the metal terminators still look the same. And again, the cool thing with this is even though we're doing weapons and we're doing the weapons and all the um, the, the equipment and stuff, there's still really cool bits of lore in here. Like the, you've got the um, Jakaro digital just weapons throughout, and stuff. Yeah. Just scattered through little bits of rules, just, just little bits of rules that make you read it and go, that's cool, I want that in my game. Yeah. I see you what know? you mean. That sawn off shotgun looks like the least sawn off <laughs> shotgun yeah, exactly. I've ever seen. It's just a normal <laughs> shotgun, it's just shorter. It's still got a muscle and everything. There's nothing shorn off about it at all. No, at no one's taken a saw to any part of that. But then you get to the and really, the, really big weapons, the heavy weapons, uh, and the same cannons. Yeah, decans. Which, which, and stuff. which probably evolved into a decanon, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Heavy conversion plasma, beam projectors. Uh, and this was back when conversion beamers made sense because they convert mm-hmm. mass. They to convert energy. mass. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and you've, got stuff like... Like, you've got stuff like the, um, what was it? Oh, God. Uh, Graviton gun as well. Grab gun. Yeah. That was, the, oh, I actually well. put that in my notes. Uh, there's a few things that I put down. I was like, blah, 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 blah. There's 21 kinds of grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've got great. that written here as well. Yeah. It basically just says all the grenades are mines. <laughs> That's what it just yeah, says, all of them. All the grenades and I was mines. like, uh, and I was like, flamers don't have a template, uh, but they do two hits. So they they do an initial hit when they hit the target, and then in the next phase in hand to hand, the target takes another hit because they're on fire, and every turn they have to roll a d6, <laughs> and on a six it goes out unless they've got friends nearby which stop what they're doing and help put out the flames for a turn, which increases it by plus one each time oh, Jesus. which was great yeah i got graviton guns specifically when they get hit they get minus d6 inches to movement doesn't actually hurt infantry at all no in no. any way but if you hit an aircraft with it it immediately crashes <laughs> yeah. and it slows down vehicles acceleration and deceleration rate uh um, melt, melt guns cannot be moved and fired no, nope. they have nope. no. can't move and fire that melt you've got a plasma i mean the multi-melter in this is on a tripod yeah, yeah, or that's that's why originally they were on bikes. I guess mm. on attack bike. Um, a plasma gun takes two turns to charge up before you can yep. fire it, and then you've got another two turns to wait. Uh, well, I think the plasma stubborn. cannon might be even longer than that. So uh, yeah. It might be. Oh, interestingly in this, I always thought that heavy plasma guns just evolved into plasma cannons, but in this they're two separate things. Two separate, yeah, two separate weapons, yeah. Oh, as with all other cool. plasma weapons, a massive energy drain is involved. Power reserves are enormous. Even so, a plasma cannon cannot be fired for two turns in succession. So it's just two turns. Mm, yeah, yeah. I love that uh, they've, got, yeah. they've got macro cannon here. Macro <laughs> cannon are the largest and heaviest versions of the auto cannon. They fire explosive such... cells of considerable size and potency. A micro cannon can be mounted in a vehicle, taking up six weapon points, but yeah. they're more commonly used in placements and static defense. They can also be used for indirect fire. See the advanced gamer. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> but maximum range is about 40 kilometers, but it's regarded as unlimited. <laughs> it's the purposes of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, short range, long range, strength 10, damage 2d10. Yeah. Save modifier minus 6 <laughs> with oh. a 2 inch blast. That's like, sorry, what? That's, that's I, wonder if anybody, I wonder if anybody ever used it. Uh, oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't love know. reading some of the effects of the grenades as well. You've got a hallucinogen gas, gas grenade here. I'm not yes. going to read all of them. I'm going to read number 8 and number 10. Yeah, so some no. of them are really interesting. And that's where number stuff eight. like respirators and auto senses come in because they negate yeah. the effects. Because they negate the effects. Number 8 is the sky is so big and wide, it would be great to just jump into <laughs> it and fly around like a terror squirrel. The character stands on his spot and leaps into the air as high as he can. Why are your comrades looking at you like that? You smile and ask them if they want to fly to yeah, the, <laughs> the model, model is incapacitated until next turn <laughs> and then roll for it again if it remains within the gas cloud exactly I think, gas then, cloud, number 10. I think they actually moved in this oh there you go yes, yeah. they do you rolled for field effects one it disperses yeah. yeah two to five remains as it is on a six it drifts off d6 yeah, d- inches off. in the direction <laughs> of the wind as determined by the gm so yeah, he could yeah. just say congratulations <laughs> your commander is now free of the effects of the hallucinogen gas unfortunately it's drifted onto the rest of your <laughs> squad who are now fucked and 10 jones never liked you 
Look at him walking <laughs> in front. Steals your money. Lies. Cheats. You hate him. Serve him right <laughs> if you blew his head off. The character fires at his nearest friend, yelling abuse and shooting anyone who gets in his way. They're on Jones's side. The effects last the next turn, and then you roll again. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, but fantastic. again, if you try to play it at this, spend the points on respirators. This, if you tried to do it at this level, you just, your games would take forever. I mean, second edition took a long time to play. A long time to play. Yeah. But yeah, you got you got so many different types of grenades. You say you got haywire grenades, photon grenades. Um, yeah, haywire carried through, through. Carried through as a weapon yeah, effect in through. the present yeah. day, didn't it? Interestingly, power armored marines are vulnerable to haywire. Funnily yes. enough, they are, which I yes. thought was really good. And it, it like the, the the effectiveness of haywire scales with the equipment's mm. tech level. And a lot of these would end up in the first edition of Necromander as well. I don't know what the current yeah. edition of Necromander is like, but a lot of yeah, these I would make it through to the first edition. A lot of these have still got rolled in, I think. Not as many, mm. but I'm sure they're still there. No, no, I imagine not, no. But yeah, a lot of these would be in second edition as well. I do remember a lot of these being in second edition. You've got mm. some female representation with an awesome piece of artwork. A really nice piece of artwork. Again, I'll find out who did it. Oh, the lady with the head. 2000 AD. Yeah, that's really uh, cool. It's got a little, is that a PT in the bottom right corner? 9T? PT? Bottom left. PT on 9T? Yeah, no, I see it. It could be an M. I have no idea. I'll find out who it is. I am, yeah. Uh, so that, that, that's really cool. And then, yeah, that just basically... And then all the weapons are carried. I mean, bear in mind, we're still on a, like page 97 at the moment. <laughs> yeah. God. And then you've got the weapon, weapon summaries and the vehicle profiles, and it just goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, there's All loads. the different flyers, like loads of different flyers, loads of different vehicles. One thing I did like was they've... The, the bike that Marines used, they called the Vincent Black Shadow. The Vincent Black is, Shadow, yeah, I saw which that, yeah. Which is actually a real post-Second real, World War English motorbike. It is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a real motorbike. My dad would um, have approved of that, even though I think the motorbikes would have probably been the same age as him if he was still around. <laughs> yeah. You've got the very, very early Land Raider, the Mark yes. One. Yeah, yeah. Nice one, Heresy. you still got them. The old yeah, school indeed. August Flyer. Carried through. You've got those Imperial Marines. I could not have handled having 10 models looking exactly the same like that. That, that makes me twitch a little bit. <laughs> um, you've got all these, but then you've got all these different things. You've got Stega tanks, all these different walkers. Yeah, yeah, walkers. There's just tanks. so much imagination. And the feel of it is still here. The Space Marines, do not waste your tears. I was not born to watch the world grow dim. Life is not measured in years, but by the deeds, by the of, deeds men. of men. Yes, yeah. so fucking cool, man. It is. You got a breakdown of power armor. It's all yep, stripped down. It's armor. like a blueprint section. All your different fields and stuff. I, that's the bit I'm wondering if Jess Goodwin might have been involved with that that power armor. Yeah, I reckon. Thing. Be interested to see who did the actual design for it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, was I don't think it was Jez. I think it was someone else who initially designed Marines. It was Bob Maysmith, from what I remember. That's probably it. Yeah, it's Bob Maysmith. I think Jez came on board and did the second edition where he did the the Aquila armor because he did that great big picture of him sitting next to it, scaled. He did the right. whole thing to real scale. Um, and then we get to the robot bits, and this is the bit I was talking about: all the different ro- uh, robots, <laughs> weaponry, hoverbots, wheelbots, tracked. Oh my god, tracked bots. Walkers. And then the bit where you've got to do yeah the walkers, and then the bit where you've got to do, treadmills. Ah. Then you've got a whole bit on bionics as well. Yeah, miscellaneous. I remember those. They carried through into what third edition? Uh, second? Yeah, Bionics. Yeah, Bionics carried right, 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 right the way through. And then you've got all these different stuff. And it's just there's so much of it. It's so dense. There is so much of it. You've got psychological combat drugs, friends on. Uh, yeah, it just as you say, power board. Power board is fundamentally a toy. <laughs> it's used in the dangerous but popular popular sport of sky surfing. You know, yeah. straight out, straight out 2000 AD. Judge Dread. That is. Yeah, and that's where Silk's little Silk's little favourite squat is with his with yep. his cap and his and his bulgy eye makeup cap. board. Yeah, a slam jump sector. Packs, jump packs are there. Gravity shoots yep. as made famous by the uh, Elysian drop troops. Yeah, flight plaques, loads it's of stuff. All Phase field generators, it's all... a porter rack for some poor bastard to get lugged about on. <laughs> Sin skin. It's it's all here. This is the building blocks of the Warhammer forty thousand universe. And even though, as I say, we're still in rules, we're now on page one hundred twenty five, <laughs> and we've got teleporters. It's still there's a lot more marines in of, these pictures. There's bits of law all the way through. Yeah, there's loads more marines. I mean, what the hell is this? Page one twenty seven. What the fuck is that? That looks awesome. I don't know. That thing always looked like a massive robot insect thing. Yeah. Oh, I've no idea what it's doing. It looks like it's blowing stuff up. But there's a dude standing in front of it, just going like, and what? <laughs> it was, he's got glow sticks out so I'm wondering if it's something landing might be a f- yeah yes maybe might be some sort of weird flyer I don't mm. know why it looks like it's shooting the floor then 
It doesn't look well. I think it's just like it's it's the exhausts and stuff, or maybe it's just shooting the floor just for the shit of it. I don't know. It's <laughs> something. But yeah, you've got random rules for random teleporting, and and it's just all here, and it's absolutely mental. And there is a hundred and twenty eight pages of it, and then on yep. page one hundred and thirty, we finally get to the law section, the age of the Imperium. And I don't know about you, Matt, but once again, I was impressed by how much of this is still here. Still there, yeah, still valid. Quite a Warp lot. Warp space, uh, astropaths, navigators. Most of it is still very much the way it was. It really this is. This is pretty much as, as far as I got with my notes. By the way, I got okay, to this bit and then I was like, okay, I'm out. Fair enough. Well, that's, that's cool. That's cool. I, I did my uh, homework in advance like a good boy. So I've got notes on the law. <laughs> uh, I mainly put down there's no chaos. The chaos gods nope. do not exist. Chaos does mentioned. not exist. There are warp they, creatures. They hadn't ripped them off at that point. No, no, exactly. It will eventually become demons, but there are no chaos gods. There is also, as I said, no Horus, no heresy, no, no crime marks. Not. Yeah, I did a quick search. Yeah. The emperor is dead. He looks somewhat he just- different kind of died of old age yeah he does look different he kind of just got really old and died and he's still on the throne as a corpse sort but, of as i say sort of died sort of yeah sort of dead so that's carried yeah. over into modern day as well <laughs> navigators the astronomicon it's all there and what else is also here is the custodies the mechanicus arbites astronomica yep. telepathica planetary governors legions and Astartes, and it says legiones and Astartes. the chapters but it's legiones it's just yeah just it's it's all here the imperial army is the imperial army there's no different regiments and that's another note i made um so there's no sort of catachins uh valhallans that all came in the second edition there was just the imperial army here whether or not they actually came in a compendium or something i don't know but here it's the necromundan so they're still taken from worlds but it's like the necromundan 87th and they all they are the imperial army there's no variation yeah. and if you there. if you wanted to vary them you're kind of up to doing it yourself when you generated your force i guess exactly, and look, look yeah. they're stuck in more stats there's more sneaky rules they, when they do rules uh, when they do law they mean law and extra tables yeah um, and extra tables one for thing, generated equipment one thing i did want to mention is the rogue traders and people might wonder why this book is called rogue trader when it's quite simply very literally about rogue traders yeah. and more about armies and stuff. And Rick, well, originally, in one of his interviews, said it was originally about the rogue traders. And it was a, a role play book for you to have a rogue trader and like an entourage with him doing all yep. these different missions and stuff. And they had space combat and stuff in it. And then presumably, Ships. and yeah, it, almost like a space combat thing. And, and presumably he got carried away. <laughs> yeah, I think no, I think it was Brian Ansel. He basically said we don't want to put all that stuff in it. We'll strip it down, yes, but we'll, we'll promise down, yeah. that we'll do we'll do a proper game for that later on. And then uh, they did space fleet, they, yeah, which yeah, was did space mm, fleet. Well, I've still no got that in the box somewhere. No battlefleet, not battlefleet gothic, but you've got all the different kind of worlds in here: agricultural worlds, civilized worlds, death worlds, feral planets, hive worlds, industrial worlds. No forge worlds, but medieval worlds, which allows you to carry over some of the Warhammer Fantasy battle stuff. Yep. Um, then you get a bit on the emperor, which again, it, it, it's it's the, the building blocks are there. You know, he is the master of mankind, god of it, the human it, race. It specifically Obviously, mentions that fully, fully ripped off from June, admittedly. <laughs> um, yeah, and navigators as well. Yeah, exactly. Navigators taken from June, but yeah, the the the, the emperor. Uh, came out, uh, did the Age of the Imperium. You've got the Age of Dark Technology. You've got the Age of Strife is all yeah, here. it's all there. Uh, and yeah, basically, he's just been around for so long that his body can no longer support life. Uh, and it says he shatters carcass, remains intact only because it is held by a spirit itself, sustained by the strangest machinery, ancient artifacts constructed by the Emperor in an elder age. And his will, his will basically tele- goes up off the, uh, the Imperium. Uh, one thing I did want to mention was the custodies, because they do look somewhat different. Just a tad. <laughs> Half naked with leather trousers. It's an interesting look. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, then, then obviously you've got yeah, a picture of the I'm Emperor kind of like, against the guy like I'm not sure if those are actually early Eldar, you know, because the helmets are the same. Um, maybe they look a, a, a bit muscled for the elder but yeah maybe maybe there might have been because as you say the um the, the helmets are almost exactly the same as the proto guardians that we got yep yeah, yeah. with the weird so, voice called it looks a little bit fishy and in this the elder are just mercenaries and pirates so yep. there may have well been some sharing of, of technology and stuff but as you quite correctly say they then go and throw some more some more tables at you so it's just like surprise, 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 surprise. <laughs> here's some more rules yeah. 
130 pages you. was not enough. But to be fair, the rules had a lot of law in it as well. So yeah. I heard that you liked the rules, so we gave you some more. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, we've got rules for, rules for your rules. Um, but I like this little bit of um, law about the um, Eat of the Malediction for the Dark Angels. That was quite cool. Yes. Although apparently the Dark Angels Space Fortress orbits the giant planet De Hallen. Fair enough. Yeah, they had, they had um, quite flesh, fleshed out a lot of stuff here, yeah. yeah. But one thing that I did find was quite cool. The feast celebrates the founding of the chapter by Lynn L. Gonson. Mm. Close. Lionel Johnson, you know, yep. very close. So, um, yeah, you've got all the building blocks here and it's, it's, it's all quite cool. But yeah, again, you've got all the Adeptus in here. We won't go through them all. All the groundwork has been done. And I remember that picture of the Imperial Eagle where the different parts of the Eagle represent the different Adeptus. Yes. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. Which is, is, is very cool, and it's there got it different colours for all their habits and stuff. Yeah, it's a uh, page uh, 141. That's it. With the um, Telepathica and Astronomica. And one thing, the wings. one thing I have to, I've got, I've, I've got it in, in massive capital letters. If you want irreverence, if you want references, and you want British silliness, there's a picture of an Inquisitor with a yin yang sign on him, a bolter, a little <laughs> arrow, <laughs> and a hat. And his name, Matt, what's his name? I'm sure there's a story behind that. His uh, name is Obi Wan Sherlock Clouseau. <laughs> I think this is specifically mentioned by Ricky in his interview. Yes. As being horrifically tongue in cheek. Horrifically tongue in cheek and British. So, yes, Obi Wan Sherlock Clouseau. Interesting. I'm and sure then, they based they, him on someone real as well, the artwork. Yeah, probably, most probably. Someone yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does look like, yeah, the sort of, uh, your typical sort of uh, enthusiast. Um, then you and can then be the, on the Inquisitor. And then, whoa, whoa, whoa. The ad mech on the next page is just like. What I want to say it's well. so Geiger like. It's so yeah. fucked up. It looks like if Geiger did Doom. You know the video game Doom? Very much so. And um, that's more or less, again, what I've got written here. That is an awesome piece of artwork. It really is. It's so cool. It's, I mean, like, I, the, the Mechanicum never, ever looked like that again. Not quite you, like that. Do you reckon that's a Blanche? No, it's John not Blanche? a Blanche. It's not a Blanche. I thought it was a Blanche at first, but it's not. It's another person. And I will get the credit on the video because I do firmly believe in that. There is a John Blanche piece in here, and it's epic. And I'll let you know when we get to it. Hmm. So, yeah, again, more charts, more statistics. More of all that kind of stuff. <laughs> You've got the Inquisition, Inquisition logo here, I noticed. The eye with the three bars across it. Yep. It's there on page 144. More charts, more charts. Right next to the picture of, some, of someone groveling. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, in front of the Inquisitor. Right. You have fucked up. More charts, more charts, Inquisitors, Astropaths, more charts, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Just, yeah, just so much of it. And it, there's just it's so dense. There's so much. Navigators, champions, minor heroes, major heroes, fighting characteristics, random charts for advances, just Jakaro digital weapons, <laughs> out, outfitting monkeys. navigators, all this kind of stuff. And then you get the Legions and Startees, and it's more or less just a page, more or less. Young recruits, that's still here, are subjected to many hours of intensive training, indoctrination leading to physical and mental changes, but there's no gene seed. There's no nope. implants. They make references to biochem and psychosurgery. The black carapace is there. Yep. But that's it. And they shall know no fear right there at the start of it. So the angels right of death are mentioned as well. Yes, angels of death are mentioned. You've still got chapter leaders, imperial commanders, all that kind of stuff. But in this, they are literally second to the emperor. There's no lords of terror and that kind of stuff bossing them about but you've got the power armor dial mind you i still don't think here. they have much success at bossing chapters about now do they no not really not really <laughs> uh, uh like, even even inquisitors are sort of not really... like, we, we petition you to go and do this and the chapter's like that's yeah, very maybe. interesting i'm going to ignore yeah. you <laughs> but okay, the other thing i noticed yeah. <laughs> is you've only got 12 chapters here yep so again because you've got no horus heresy or anything like that there's none of the traitor chapters so you've literally got blood angels blood drinkers bit derivative crimson yeah, fists dark angels flesh eaters flesh terrors again bit derivative <laughs> iron hands well, the iron hands were there rainbow warriors yep. i know sucks like those but no um, <laughs> silver skulls i noticed was a thing and they were yeah, yeah. properly there and they wouldn't come back for a little while and then you've got your space wolves ultra rings white scars no imperial fists no black templars none of that is here and then more charts because you need more charts so you've got charts for all your transports even like it goes into tactics and all that kind of stuff. You've got a great diagram of a fortress monastery of the Space Wolves on Lucan, as I said. 
Fenris was not a thing. With a breakdown of all the areas of that, then you've got the warriors, the um, Imperial Army. Proto-Imperial um, Guard, by the looks of it. Yeah, very, very early Imperial Guard. As I say, no real regiments or different planets or anything like that. It's a very much a, uh, a generic army. Is that Jim Burns bit next? That might be Jim Burns bit of artwork. I'm not sure. But then, yeah, loads more. Loads. I mean, the charts and the statistics and the random generation never ends. It no, goes I'm quite glad they gave the us way, the chart for our charts. All the way through the book, yeah. I like this piece of artwork on page um, 167. That aesthetic oh. carried through quite quite far, the kind of Eldar yes. Ranger. Yeah. That could well be a Jess Goodwin piece, I reckon. Not sure about his gimp, though. No. no a bit odd. <laughs> but again, that kind of came back. It kind of reminds me of those um, Nomads got released for Necromander recently. Yeah, a little bit. So, uh, yeah. then you've got ever, the, the... ever so slightly the Skitaru with their mm, yeah, trans-Uranic yeah, Aquabus. Aquabus, yeah. Uh, and Jez did, I've got the Jez Goodwin sketchbook downstairs um, that he signed for I me. Think I and have. a lot of that comes through, like, even though that, that book's really old now, I got it back in like, Christ, second, third edition came out. Don't um, think about it. You'll see a lot of those things making appearances at various points in the following Decades. many, many years. I love the fact in this that for a Space Marine, uh, studs um, indicate 10 years of service. <laughs> that got altered somewhat that got, that got, that, that, that got correctly retconned because yeah. um, otherwise it would literally just be a metal head but you had field police in this and all sorts I remember of that. random stuff yeah, the law is mostly intact you've got assassins although you haven't got your different all your different types of uh, assassin you've got your assassins in there you've got renegade space marines and yep black dark angels with red stripe red helmet yep, stripe I still angels. put on my 30k ones today Cool, yeah. And then another thing I like was you've got your abhumans, you've got beastmans, you've got halflings and squats, which is interesting. I think halflings um, are smaller because halflings, squats, they, squats they are smaller than yeah. dwarves. And the halflings They're are basically, smaller. they are halflings from fantasy. They love their food, all that kind of stuff. Tribal, <laughs> hedonistic, sexually promiscuous. <laughs> <laughs> homo sapiens minimus. Indeed, and the squats are homo sapiens rotundus. Yeah, bit, bit Yeah, naughty. again, it's, it's, it's all... It's all there, and uh, apparently even squats have got mastery levels of psychics. I did not know that. Probably for ancestors, I'd say. Yeah, I guess. The Eldar are here, but again, they're very, very early. They're just mercenaries Ooh, and pirates. Craftworlds are mentioned, yep. They use their solar sails. That's all here and stuff. Yep. But they are Space kind of yeah, traders, merchants. It's kind of the exodite life for them. They bump into humans every now and again. It, it does say, like, you know, sort of there's, there's some rivalry between them. But again, the law has not been put in place with these guys. They've got the warp the warp gates. It's not referred to as the webway yet. But you've got no path of the Eldar. You've got no um, aspects. There's no avatar, no farseers or any of that. It's, it's, it's basically Eldar adventurers. They are just elves, space elves. Uh, but as you yeah. say, their helmet is very much suspiciously like the Custodes ones. Yeah, it's very odd. Sus. Suspect. As the kids would say, most of us try to read it. Cause I'm, so I'm assuming yeah. they're all different, different pirate sets. A lot of which don't sound, pirates. Don't sound nah. very Eldar, but you've got the um, you've got the Eye well, of Isha there. Well, Warp Hunters are a vehicle that Forge World did. Are they're they? kind of like a, a a Falcon, kind of like a salt gum with like a, oh, okay. a big a big de, a D flail. That was it sticking out the front of it with no oh, turret okay, on cool. top. Um, I've got the one void... up on the shelf behind me. And Void Dragons obviously got carried Void Dragon turned, uh, turned into a Necron. So uh, into Mars, okay. yeah. So yeah, and, and then you've got more more charts and, and more charts <laughs> more and things. more charts, and, then and it never ends. But I have noticed in this part of the book that you are getting a lot of color color spreads of, of photos yes. and stuff. And as I say, you've got the orcs; they're not funguses. They are extremely violent and hate everybody, but they're not the they're comedy not aspect of. They're, they're a lot thinner, a lot more like the um the fantasy Lord of the Rings types of orcs. Yeah, but the comedy bit is not really here. Uh, it's, orcs, uh, it's, they're taken a bit more seriously. Of, yeah. In the lore, I think they're taken more seriously, but in yeah. but, vis, but like um visually, they're still a little bit kind of like why sort of like barbarians but green. Yeah, they are. They're like um fantasy proto, you know, like wearing loincloths. Some of them wearing loincloths, like loincloths and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they do look like as you say a fantasy version that just picked up guns. But that's the case with a lot of this kind of stuff. Rogue already, Trader was very much up. a sci fantasy rather than sci fi at this point in my opinion. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of crossover. But you know, there's nothing. Uh, <laughs> Gretchen, got, you, Gretchen, Gretchen, Gretchen yeah. And then you've got that killer piece of John Blanche artwork. That's right, John Blanche, about. definitely, yeah. That is a hundred percent John Blanche. That's nice. Um 
and yeah, that's a that's another iconic piece of artwork. I'm kind of tempted to print it and frame it. Yeah, actually, I would be too. That's really really nice. I've Sam. got a couple of signed. I've got a signed John Blanche piece. I got it from the Skulls promotion. I've got oh, a signed nice. signed John Blanche print of an Inquisitor and a signed David Gallagher print of an Inquisitor. Ah, good. Should get those framed at some point. And then, as you say, Slan. Yeah, Slan, which obviously promptly got abandoned, but you'll see lots of lots of lizard man here. They picked up lizard men for fantasy. They carried over an awful lot of this. You've got the Aztec imagery. You've got a Slan mace priest in the bottom left hand of yep. page one nine five. It's yeah, a nice see drawing it. as well. It is a nice drawing. Yeah, you'll see a lot of crossover there. And they've got braves and things like that. So you've got the kind of tribal thing. Even they've got vehicles. Uh, and then you've got the Jacaro, and they say that they are basically like, you know, like big orange apes. With orangutans, yeah. Sh- stupidly intelligent and good at making things and, and fixing things. Uh, and again, uh, uh, all that got picked up again. And I've just remembered all the creatures. God, we're nowhere near done. Then you've got that um, <laughs> famous piece of the um, recreation of the um, flag at Iojima. Jima? Iojima? Yeah. Iojima, yeah. Put, yeah. put with Marines. Put with Marines. And they made that into a, a, into model a Skulls, well, they? Skulls model as well, yeah. Uh, then you've got the Tunis and the High Fleets. Woo! Early Tyranny, it looks like a, a what? It looks almost like almost a like a termagant. Almost like I mean, the flesh ball is nearly exactly the same. Yeah, but it's got weird eyes poking out the back of it, uh, out of it, the middle of its back, and weird webbed feet at the back for clambering around. Yeah, I think it's specifically mentioned somewhere that those are there for for stability. So when it runs stability, down corridors yeah. and stuff, it can latch onto balls and whatnot. Um, and yeah. it doesn't mention and high fleets. Yeah, Tyranids and high fleets. Yep, Tyranids yeah. wearing holsters is a little bit weird. I did put that Zotes, in the notes. No. Uh, Zotes are a slave race. Yes, they were. Yeah. Uh, for the for the Tyranids, they were, they were bioengineered slaves. Who vanished um, until Darkstone Fortress. And then they, surprisingly, just rocked up in an expansion. Have a Zote. Blackstone, I was like, I was like, Blackstone what? Fortress. Yeah. Yes, I've got mine and I painted it and it's awesome. I know, I missed it, unfortunately. I never got one. Oh man, not impossible to get now, unfortunately. I know. Nice if they just be like the thing is like they've got the sprue they've got the bits to make the sprue just just fucking make it people will buy it yes make people more please buy it yeah make more yeah. Uh, and then you've got what is an awful awful lot of animals uh, and we'll go through the, them because the, there's a the bit of cthulhu in here is massive the bestiary is massive but there's a bit astral of cthulhu hounds in I quite like astral hounds as a as a nod to to British hounds of Tindalus dog folklore yeah well not not just that they're the hounds of Tindalus from um, cthulhu Ah. HP Lovecraft's the uh, teleporting aspect of it is very Hounds of Timberless so you've got that and obviously you've got enslavers tentacles all over the place yep. um, just straight up vampires yeah just <laughs> yeah. straight up uh, just you've got psych, psych I, think vamp- I think vampirism is actually a mutation as well that you can roll for yeah, you dudes okay you've got warp entities very very early proto demons or vampires proto-demons. it's just a fucking winged bat just wing bat, yeah, yeah, exactly. Winged humanoid bat. You've got the amble. Yeah, ambles are there. Uh, Again, uh, resurrected uh, from amble. Blackstone Fortress. Yep, yep, I got that one too. Uh, bouncers. It's like a, can, a, ca- a carnivorous sand clam. Carnivorous sand clam. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'll start giggling. <laughs> catching devils and catching face eaters. Yeah, catching face eaters. It's just a flannel. Um, <laughs> oh mate, where was that? Uh, but con on several other worlds, evil through accident or design is unknown. The face eater is one of the most unpleasant species on this generally rather dangerous world. In its natural environment, it hangs from trees or lies in wait by trackways or watering holes. When a likely looking victim approaches, the face eater pounces a powerful muscle spasm, propelling the animal. <laughs> the animal. It's literally a flannel. Yeah, propelling you need, the animal. Read, yeah. read, the last, read the last two sentences. Several meters. Oh, no, but yeah. Um, where were we? Started they with natu- they naturally they na- seek warm, they naturally damp seek warm, damp conditions, hence their propensity to turn up in bathrooms. <laughs> but their resemblance to a face flannel has led to several unpleasant and well publicized accidents. Yeah, I remembered that. <laughs> Literally just a flannel. All of this work put in. All Crawlers. this work. Crawlers, crotalids, felon cud bears. Yeah, felon cud bear. What the hell? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Uh, fairy beasts. Fairy and we do need to mention. Gene stealers, notably separate from Tyranids, and not Absolutely. looking like a gene stealer. Maybe? Not looking anything like a gene stealer from this... the, U- the moons of Yamal. Yep, that's still retained. Which is retained, and the tentacles and kind of the implantation kind of things in, in um, yeah 
still mentioned but yes as you say very yes. much different from tyranids yeah. nothing it, to do with them it's still two two legs and four arms but apart yep. from that some yeah. of the some of the design you've got the ribs bits and the legs that's been carried across yeah, yeah, yeah. that's been carried across so Tail, um, the tail's way too big the head just looks yeah. like a, a sucker with teeth it's all gone horribly wrong it kind of looks like a, a lamprey doesn't it, that's it. Um, yeah yeah, all it's, it's all there, Giant and you've got the stuff. You've got the stuff where it says with the hybrids and stuff like that, where they hybridize with humans, and you get yep. different generations and stuff. So, you know, again, the build blocks were there. It's just they hadn't put in the Tyranid law. So it hadn't you know, been there. They were just a nuisance, another species to deal with. Then you've got your giant bugs and grocs. Yep. Giant spiders for the win. The guy rinks are there. As a I as also yeah. rocked up with uh, with Eldar recently or semi recently, uh, they were she, with the um, what's her name, Yvrain. That's it. If you want, a, if you want a fancy psychic cat, there you go. I've still got that somewhere. I've got that model. I don't know where I've she still is. got mine as well. I never quite finished painting it. Uh, lash worms, mimics, <laughs> terror squirrels. A terror squirrel. P T E R A. Terror I love, I love, I love the thing for this. The terror squirrel was once thought to be a peaceful and harmless animal. Its cute furry appearance making it a popular pet throughout the Imperium. Then the truth emerged: the terror squirrel is merely one stage in the life cycle of the creature. Terror squirrels live for generations as soft furred bundles of fun, and then for another cycle of generations as dangerous blood drinking carnivores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a giant flying <laughs> squirrel with razor sharp teeth. Rippy fish, razor wings, razor <laughs> wings carried. <laughs> Razor, 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 brilliant, though. razor wings carried through. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, Dark yeah. Eldar now, I think. That's it. We've got um, swarms as well. Patch of brain leaves. And then, as if doing all the animals wasn't enough, he plants. starts doing all the fucking plants. All the plants. There's a Catachan man eater. It's, it's there somewhere. I vaguely remember it. There's um, a Venus man trap, but that was it. Again, so much different stuff. And then Vic goes, you know what? We're done. That's it. No more rules. We're done. Page 220. Does he fuck? He starts talking about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> environmental changes. Environmental up. changes. Yeah. Cyclones, earthquakes, lava flow, meteors, radiation. Oh, my God. This is all for the GM's benefit. The poor bastard. Absolutely insane. Creature charts. Three different creature charts. Three different plant charts. Just rolling dice and rolling dice to see what turns up in your games absolutely crazy and then look on page 20 to 223 is that new genes to the cult bastard i'm waiting for matt, waiting for matt to get to it <laughs> oh with the head there <laughs> the go. giant head yeah the head's not big enough it's not big enough you're right yeah it's fucking ludicrous uh then you've got loads of really cool artwork with some like like frontier um sort of uh, almost like a um Mos Eisley type thing going on, I suppose. And yes, yeah, some chebs for Matt. Some lovely, lovely chebs. You should have looked at the fifth edition Dark um Dark Elf book, mate. As I say, high nip account on a Sunday sport. Oh, dear, and then mate. you've got that really cool piece of artwork I like where you've got the space range with the, the and punk. dude on the wall. Yeah. Against the wall, yeah. Field please. And it says Marines something, but I don't know what it says. On it's been graffitied. They're they're they're, they're less than less than pleased with it. Oh look, there's a guy with the Batman logo on his shirt right next to it. Oh, yeah. How cool is that? It's down in the page crease. That's an old school Batman logo as well. Mm, from like yeah, Adam West days. It, well, it would be, wouldn't it? I mean, this is this is a good four or five years before we got the um, Tim Burton Batman. Yep. But then you've got workers. Hell's Reach is mentioned. You've got Hell's Reach street punks. Yeah. And then we've got the advanced gamer. Because fuck you, basically. <laughs> Because it wasn't advanced <laughs> enough. Because the last 228 pages weren't advanced <laughs> enough. <laughs> Absolutely batshit. Yeah, yeah. Just, just if you keep scrolling through it. You just see loads of stuff. You've got hidden movement, scenic fast, insanity, fast dice all, throwing, fast dice throwing. Yeah. Then you've got loads more um, uh, scenery bits, rubber moss, spawn soup, sponge weed thermotropic vines it's just whatever you think about the the denseness and the difficulty in penetrating the wealth of content here you have to admire it there's just so much yeah and just think without this you just wouldn't have 40k nope not at all. so much of this is still here and there then they give you rules for I mean, it is, there is a little blurb. Two things of which I've still carried over into the modern day. 
And it says, Though my guards may sleep and ships may lay at anchor, our foes know full well that big guns never tire. Oh, and, nice. underneath, and underneath it, it's attributed to the Tyrant of Badab. Oh, Huron Blackheart himself. Yeah, page 235. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing. Oh, yeah, no, I've just gone through that. Yeah, just above the, um, just next to compulsory moving. Yeah, that's mm. cool. Yeah, there's just so much. It, it's, it's the groundwork. Without this, you just don't, you don't have 40k. Nope. And, you know, just, it, it wouldn't be there. But then you've got campaign rules. You've got injury charts. For if you do get knocked out. Mate, the plot generator is. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. The plot generator is absolutely <laughs> batshit crazy. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half pages. Yep. Of a table then, for generating plots. Yep. And as I say, it's not like. Uh, here's your mission, here's your scenarios, here's your victory conditions. It's just like, you know, roll this up and just pull it together yourself. In it. Who are these three in the picture? Uh, one of them's Rick Pleasley, one of them's Brian Ansell. I don't know who the other one is. Brian Ansell's the guy at the back, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, um, yeah, Rick I, I don't know. Rick on the right? On the left, I thought. Hmm. Hmm. With that beard tell. and everything. It's been so that long looks much, that looks, and the glasses, that looks very much like a young Rick Priestley to me. I don't know yeah. who the guy on the, the right is. I just don't know. This is pre-Andy Chambers, ain't it? Yes, yes, this is pre-Andy Chambers. There's no credits or anything, unfortunately. Um, and then, finally, to round off the book, you get the hobby bit with the preparation and everything like that and how to paint your models and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which is metal, just metal metal gravy models, on plastics. top of everything else. Yeah, and yeah. Paint. So there's only yeah. a few plastics, but then you had RTB01 and... Uh, I've still got mine. Raider it's on the shelf behind me. There's even still some bits of it still on the sprue. Holy shit. Nice. Yeah. Along with my old Terminators and Tyranids box. No wonder you've got no space left. <laughs> it's true, front out. Yeah, and like making your own bits out of plastic cups and all that kind of stuff. Again, you, you never see yeah. this in The, in the dearth of scenery throughout this book is a fantastic mm-hmm. combination of stuff bought from like model railway shops and things like that and just handmade terrain like their hills are just kind of like multi-leveled polystyrene slabs that have been painted green yes like yeah exactly yeah so this, this shit didn't exist you had to make nope. your own yeah and then you've got one of my favorite pieces of artwork is on, it the in two-page the entire spread? book oh it's so good i can pick out a few of them you've got trish in there i can see trish she's on the mm. left Big Priest is in the middle. As he should be. Yeah, with the boo. Was it? I would have thought Brian Ansel would be in there, given that he was the boss. Yeah, I don't know who he'd be. Would he be the guy with like, the oh, blonde John hair holding the pistol? John Blanche is sitting next to um, Rick Priestley with the bionic eye. Ah, uh, yes, there he is, just above him. Yeah. So I have no idea who most of the others are yeah that's just a fantastic piece of artwork mm. you know that just that just captures it doesn't it it's just i mean it, I, I imagine that um steve jackson and Ian livingston are in there somewhere oh yeah i'd are. expect so given that they founded the company with brian yeah exactly but yeah just what a fantastic mm. piece of artwork mm. i love that that's just so cool looks like it's been um a, a photo's been worked on to me yeah rather than actually so. being a, actually i think being it's touring. i think it's great that they they memorialized members of staff in this way who that's worked exactly on the it. whole that's what I'm project saying. it's, it's memorialized nothing like it these days and now they're no, there don't. like anyone who picks up yeah. a book it's like oh these people did it i see their faces i wonder who they are and they're in universe as well do you know what i mean like yeah it's it, yeah it's so cool yeah i really really like that uh, and then yeah as i say it just rounds it out with the summary which is another <laughs> 30, 30 odd pages of tables <laughs> of tables and shit but it is worth mentioning here that on page 269 oh we have sisters of battle yeah sister of battle um sister sin sister, shooting sister a marine sin. shooting a marine so it's like a chaos sister of battle or renegade sister of battle maybe or maybe the the other guys are renegade but the one thing that um i noticed on this is that her space marine backpack is or her backpack is identical to the ones from second edition whereas the space marine ones aren't mm. which is quite interesting design over. so that's not a female space marine people i'm afraid there were never any female space marines that is a no. sister of battle she's got fleur de lis yeah. and everything sister sin interestingly on her shoulder pad she appears to have like that horned skull that librarians ended up inheriting yes yes 
Um, she's got spike nipples, so I'm going to oh, assume I just she thought is that chaos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think she is. I think she's just probably having a disagreement with this poor brother Vermillion who's getting blasted in the chest of he a bolt getting, gun. He's getting absolutely screwed over, isn't he? Yeah. Then, Bear, although, think, bearing in mind that Marines in this were quite mercenary, I think it's probably safe to assume that he was up to no good and she was like, I was going to say, yeah, no. maybe, as I said, maybe he's the renegade. I'm just seeing if the actual um, fluff... A little bit of text next to it has got anything, but it hasn't. It hasn't got anything about that. Interestingly, underneath it's got that bit where it says, "And they sell no, no fear." And it's like, yeah, but he's getting done. Maybe he should he's have getting, known some fear. <laughs> he's getting done over regardless. We could find out what chapter he's from because he's got the. Uh, he's got the markings the, the on the wing. shoulder. He's got the wings on him, but I can't be asked to scroll all the way back up. And then the next thing we've got is a load more lore. <laughs> and he goes Good. into like skin plants and elect twos. Elect twos are in this. Yep. I thought I thought Dan Abner invented those. Right. They're like, here. You know, all the way back in the eighties. Just incredible. Just absolutely. Uh, you'll incredible. be you'll be pleased to know that that winged lightning flash is Rainbow Warriors. I've knew it was Rainbow Warriors. Yes. <laughs> I saw I saw the I, you know what it was? I, I saw the stripes on his on his helmet and I was like, I bet that's Rainbow Warriors. Nah. Rainbow Warriors. <laughs> That's reason enough to Silly. shoot. Sorry, Sorry, Sucks. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, really. Sorry. Um, standard cut template constructs. Frank, is he a veteran? Interesting. They're in here as well. SDCs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then another really cool piece of artwork by that guy that we, we thought was John Blanche, but isn't, but does that kind of Geigerist type stuff. Really nice piece showing off the scale there. Yeah. Slightly funky chainsaws. Slightly funky chainsaws. Yeah. Sort of almost a spine. Mm, yeah, Ish. very much so. And then you've got the um, the timeline of the Rogue Trader universe. And as I said, Dark Age of Technology, Age of Strife, Imperium, it's all here. Actually, um, um, what does a husk blade look like? A bit like that. <laughs> a bit like that. It's got a little pressure gauge on it. <laughs> it's mental. Yeah, just, oh man, just so, so very cool. Very cool. We've gone past it and I don't know how I missed it. Can you do a quick text search? Yep. Can you t- text search Birmingham for me, please? <laughs> Birmingham. Yep. Trust me. I don't know how I've missed it because I saw it the first time around and I made a note, but I forgot to note down the page. Uh, there's one. There's a mention of it on the equipment page. What for page? Musket. Uh, musket. It's on 73. Primitive okay. weapons still used on some feral and backward planets, of which Birmingham is the most well known. Birmingham, aka the Black Planet. <laughs> That's so it. it receives almost no visible <laughs> light, and as a result, no one wants to go there. Its inhabitants <laughs> have become linguistically and culturally isolated. <laughs> you Just know a little some, bit, a little bit you, of a cheeky dig there from Nottingham. <laughs> yeah, but why Birmingham? I wonder. Well, I can only think um, because Rick might have been from Manchester, and obviously What's... Manchester and Birmingham have got kind of a yeah. I wanted, I, I wanted to mention that. Uh, that made me. That made me chuckle. <laughs> black planet the black country yeah you know that um when i was working at lloyd's when i was running their four team i had to take over from a staff member who fucking got in massive co- uh, trouble for calling it the black, black country oh really so yeah he had somebody phone up um reporting some fraud or something and he was just making conversation like you do because it fucking takes ages to log it all down and everything and he was just like oh yeah they're chatting about it and it was chatting about it where you were from uh, from south end from birmingham he was like, oh the black country <laughs> and then I listened to the recording later and the tone just completely fucking changes. Dull. And the person's like, oh, I don't think you can call it that. I'm not happy with that at all. But it is actually fucking called The Black Country. It is, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, name they're for it. proper going off on it. Like, no, no, I'm not happy with you. I want to speak to your super. I'll take over the corner. I'm like, oh, I try and explain it. I'm trying to explain like it's actually called The Black Country, but they're having none of it. And they think I'm being racist. And they think my staff member's being racist. No, and in the end, I not. just have to say, like, oh, I'm really sorry. Okay, but, you know, like, there is this reason, and I'll listen to the call, and yes, I'll speak to the staff member and everything. And afterwards, I'm just like, mate, I'm not saying nothing to you because you did nothing wrong. Yeah, Absolutely batshit crazy. Absolutely batshit crazy. I was like, but they, yeah. yeah, you could just see them, they're like, oh, no, no, I don't think you can say that. I don't think that's right. I think you can so, say it's that. Like, I'm sorry, the customer is not always right. <laughs> the customer is not, <laughs> no. More often than not, the customer is a complete fucking bell end. Apparently, um, the, full, the full quote for that is the customer is always right in terms of taste in that you should never stop a customer from buying clothes that you think look daft because spending money is spending money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of see that. I mean, yeah, fair enough. I've never worked in, in clothing retail, retail so uh, I can't, <laughs> I can't judge on that. I've worn the same thing for about 20 fucking years now. So 
<laughs> Com- combat shorts and a back t-shirt, mate. Normally with a band yep. name on it. Yep, it always works. I think I'll that's pretty much Rogue Trader done, ain't it? You know what we have just about managed to completely do Rogue Trader. And um, it was a joyous ride, I have to say. It's so yeah. cool. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the bolter here, and the bolter is unchanged. No, yeah, yeah. The basic design is pretty much exactly the same. A lot of the weapons age, haven't. Age 70, it's just it's the same. And okay, they got rid of silliness like the crossbows, but flamers stayed the same for ages. Auto gun is still the same now. Yeah, metals and plasma guns, still the same. And it's incredible. It's an incredible piece of work. And GW have reprinted this book. And they did, yeah. even even though I would say that it is uh, it's more a relic, it's more a piece of its time, it is a fantastic book to re- look through. And even though you're not going to be required to assimilate all the information. It's like trying to read the fucking Silmarillion, put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah. It is, as a historical document, an absolutely incredible piece of work. It really is. It's the building blocks for everything that we know now, but the tone, the feeling, the vibe of it, Matt, I think you will agree, is just completely different to what we have now. Absolutely, yeah. It's just I think, the, I think the closest the closest vibe that we get in 40k that comes close to this is probably orcs, but but it's orcs take it a little bit further intrinsically yeah. based on yeah. how they are. Yeah, I suppose I see what you mean. I mean, I don't like the orcs. I don't like the way that they're basically comic relief. I would like the orcs to be treated as a lot more serious, kind of like the um they, they were in the heresy. You know, I like them because they're kind proper. of like a, a leftover from a less uptight time. Yes, I was going to say that. Even though I don't like the orcs, I like the fact that we still have them because, as yes. you correctly say, they are the only real leftover that we have. I mean, obviously, they brought back things like the Zoe and the Amble, but it's not quite mm. the same. This was a, uh, Eldar a product Corsairs. of its time. And, and yeah, the, the Eldar well, Corsairs. The, well, the Forge World ones, they brought yes. back for like uh, uh, the Doom of Mamiara were more mm. like the Corsairs from this. And, um, you know, GW does does do referential stuff. They did the Imperial Marine for the 25th anniversary yeah. and, and, and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. With, but with GW itself is a unrecognisable company from what produced this. Fair comment. Yeah. You know. I'd say so. Um, it's, it's completely different. And when we get into second edition, we will see the change and the building that was done. And a lot was done with second edition. A lot was done. Huh. And I'm sorry, I'm just, again i'm sorry i'm just looking through this again on page 89 it's the old elder corsairs <laughs> yes it is yeah yeah it is the elder corsairs Second as edition. i say this is where the building blocks were first you know, laid it's all yeah it's all laid down here and this would just be refined second edition would not be a massive change they would just strip some stuff out streamline some bits and when we get to it and I will wax lyrical on second edition. Because second edition is where I got into 40k, Matt. I missed I missed Rogue Trader completely. Mm. Never played it. Never know what it was like. I've played quite a lot of second edition, though. And I love second edition for what it is. So I'm really looking forward to getting to that. But what we'll do in between was we'll have a chat um, and we'll look at the connecting tissue. As you say, we've yep. got the vehicle manual, we've got some compendiums and stuff, um, and we'll do that before we get into second edition. Don't copy us, Jordan Sorcery, please, unless you've already done it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> we'll do it next week. Yeah. Do it quick. Need need about a week to recover from this, to be honest. <laughs> this has been absolutely epic. Very very cool, man. Very cool. And massive uh, yeah, blast from the past. Massive blast from the past. Nostalgia overload. I've had a, a pleasant evening nostalgizing, talking about metal and drinking Japanese whiskey. Matt, I hope you've enjoyed your time here, mate. <laughs> yeah, and I've I, been drinking I hope... Seven Up Zero and and not whiskey, which is a shame. But then I've got to be up at like six tomorrow, and driving for half six, so. I still don't. I s- still don't know if I'm streaming with this American chap in four and a half hours. I need to find out. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck. <laughs> and if so, Wake I potentially up, need set a nap. Set an alarm for quarter to five. I was going to say I just potentially have a nap. Well, I need the um, I need the stream yards li- link and everything like that. But um, yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this rambling look at Rogue Trader we've had. We do plan on doing a lot more. Uh, if you do like what we do, like, share, subscribe, feed the algorithm. Blah 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 blah. I should probably let Matt go to bed now because he's got to get up for work in the morning and I don't. Thanks.
<laughs> well, well, maybe we'll try and make the next one late. I mean, I'm, I, I, second edition's free books, but they, yeah. probably add, they probably don't add up to the depth that Rogue Trader has, if I'm being completely honest. No, I don't think it does. I don't think anything else they did did no, live up no, to the I was going to say, I really... Except maybe for the for first edition heresy, just for the sheer number of books and lore and there was, stuff. Yeah, there's got. so many books, but it's not the same. It's not like this. They they never got to this level of depth, charts, half points, characters. Oh, yeah, rules-wise, yeah. Definitely. Ever, ever, ever again. And as I say, potentially for good reason. We, we we managed it when we were kids, but it was never what GW wanted. GW, as time went on, wanted bigger armies, more money. Sell more models, yeah. Sell more models. This is understandable for a business, even though I don't necessarily agree with what they're doing now. But yeah, I'll let you go, mate. Um, I will catch you soon. And to all of our fellow grognards, we will see you next time. <laughs> Cheerio. Thanks for listening. Bye.